the turn of the year. They finished sixth that season. How high can they continue to climb under Unai Emery this time around? We're off and underway. Villa playing from right to left in possession with Diego Carlos, one of four changes from that FA Cup victory over Middlesbrough late on at the Riverside in the third round. We'll take you through the full team news and lineups in a moment, but Villa win the throw over on the far side. So let's round up Everton. The big news for them, Adelaide de Corre is back. He starts after injury for the first time in nearly a month. And Dwight McNeil does make the bench for Everton after coming off in their last match against Crystal Palace with an ankle injury. Looked like it might be serious at the time, but fortunately it's not. And he is amongst the subs. As we say, Seamus Coleman becomes their all-time record appearance maker in the Premier League. So two changes in all from their goalless draw in the FA Cup with Palace de Corre and Pickford come in for McNeil and Joao Virginia as the ball is all the way back with Emmy Martinez. Jacob Ramsey is missing for the visitors with injury. So Watkins, Diaby, Luiz and Carlos are the four changes from their FA Cup game. Cash, Dendonka and Duran dropping to the bench. Yuri Tillemans also among the substitutes after injury as a free kick is given to Everton in the centre circle. And that gives us a chance as referee David Coote gestures towards the Aston Villa half to take you through those lineups. So Pickford in goal for Everton. The back four of Coleman, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Mikalenko. Ahead of them, Anana and Garner with Harrison, Decore and Danjuma making his first start since the 17th of September, supporting Calvert-Lewin up front. Calvert-Lewin, who had that red card, very controversial against Crystal Palace, rescinded, so is available for this game. Pickford standing over this for Everton. Take you through the Villa lineup in a moment, but Pickford just outside the centre circle will lift this free kick forward. Tarkovsky's up from the back, little ricochet. Tarkovsky went down. No real appeals as the flag goes up on this near side, and it will be a free kick to Aston Villa inside their own penalty area. So Villa with Emmy Martinez in goal, the back four of Esri Conser, Diego Carlos, Clement Longley, and Alex Moreno, Douglas Luiz, and Bubakar Kamara ahead of them with Leon Bailey, John McGinn, and Musa Diaby supporting the very in form. Ollie Watkins up front. Star and women now trailing Manchester City by three goals to nil in the women's FA Cup. Jill Ward has got that. 20 minutes to play in that game. As John McGinn swings the ball into the penalty area. will be picked up by Bailey, but he slipped as he gathered possession. And it will be cleared away over the halfway line up towards Calvert-Lewin. He heads the ball back inside his own half. Bramfraid has it now, plays it out to the right-hand side. John McGinn on the stretch, couldn't quite win the header for Aston Villa. And here come Everson down the right-hand side with Jack Harrison. Approaching the penalty area, goalless here in the early stages here on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. As Seamus Coleman picks up the ball and plays it back to Tarkovsky. And Everson just enjoying their first real spell of possession. Tarkovsky lifts it forward, looking for Harrison. Not the best defending by McGinn and Harrison will get the ball across. Headed out of play and it will go out for all Nervy that by Aston Villa, Leon. Yeah, it was a little bit nervy in defending. I mean, misplaced header in the, in the clearance there at the back, but both teams looking adventurous. Both teams have got in behind their opposition. So far, Aston Villa initially with that Leon Bailey slip in a very dangerous position inside the Everton penalty here, and then great reaction from Everton to go up the other end and force this corner. So corner swung in from the right-hand side. Good play by Emi Martinez, just dipped right in front of the Aston Villa goalkeeper. All in black, and he bowls it out under arm to Wally Watkins. He will spread it out to the right-hand side, and Leon Bailey. Good tempo to the game in the early stages here at Goodison as it's headed away at the back by Dan Juma. Everton want the free kick, and belatedly they do get it. Foul in the centre circle on Jack Harrison. Set piece to the home side, nil-nil. Yeah, from that corner kick, it was actually a pretty good delivery in from, from I think it was Harrison on this this near side to us, but somebody's got to get in front of the goalkeeper. You can't allow him to come all that way and claim that ball so easily. Calvert Lewin chests it down to the edge of the penalty area. Decore was there, but can't pick up possession and Aston Villa will play it around at the back. Decore getting forward and closing down Martinez. He plays it out to Clement Longley. Over the halfway line he goes. Ollie Watkins head down will chase, but Tarkovsky is there should be able to deal with that and deals with that very calmly indeed under real pressure there from Ollie Watkins back into the penalty area goes the ball from Tarkovsky to Branthwaite Tarkovsky's all back to Branthwaite a little short but Branthwaite's clearance gets a nick off Watkins and Everton have the throw yeah good pressure that from from Aston Villa forcing Everton to go backwards Ollie Watkins supported by Diaby not giving Everton a kick there here goes Harrison down the right-hand side for Everton, taking on Moreno and Kamara. Neither of them can stop the cross. 
ball across, miscue on the edge of the six-yard box, still alive for Everton, won't reach Garner, driven by Mikhelenko, high over the bar, but that was a chance for Everton on the corner of that six-yard box. It was Dan Juma coming in, who really does have a bit of a point to prove, wasn't able to prove it on that occasion, didn't get the cleanest connection on the shot. No, but he's the person, Dan Juma, who had the big chance, brilliant play from Everton down that right-hand side, picking out unmarked Dan Juma, the back post just completely missed hits his shot Mikalenko's effort was always a difficult one John McKinn straight up to the referee though he wasn't happy with where Everton took that throwing from and they've stolen it with Anana good defending by Emi Martinez the foul's belatedly been given as Anana slid into the penalty area trying to get to that ball first it was really brave goalkeeping from Emi Martinez who stays down the free kick given Villa had cleared the ball away but my word Leon Osman they played themselves into some danger there they really haven't started this game at all Aston Villa they yeah. need to wake up Emi Martinez gives Douglas Luiz a really poor pass on the edge of his own penalty area straight ball he's got his back to play inside the D on the edge of his penalty here and those long legs of Onana just came right through him just nicked the ball away and then it was a race between who could get there first and on it all the outrushing Martinez and Onana had every right to stretch and go for that Martinez does get a glove on it the legs of Onana going into the chest of I mean Martinez and he stayed down but no question that the Everton midfielder should have been sliding in for that challenge on the goalkeeper yeah, he's up to his feet now, Emi Martinez. Right decision, I think, but as you say, he's completely entitled to go for it again. Villa played out from the back and Everton put the press on with three blue shirts. But Villa this time do manage to clear over the halfway line. And Tarkovsky nods it down out to this right-hand side and Seamus Coleman intercepted by Douglas Luiz just inside the Aston Villa half. Nice couple of keepy-uppies, but Moreno won't keep it in. Coleman's clearance, though, goes straight out of play over the head of the Aston Villa manager, Unai Emery. Now for a throw to the visiting side. Seven minutes gone. It's absolutely flown by Leon. We're still goalless. Yeah, it's gone quickly. You're talking about different styles and what you're trying to achieve. Everton will really enjoy Aston Villa trying to play out from the back and taking chances on the edge of their own penalty area. Everton are very good at winning the ball back. They create chances from those situations. But you can also see what Aston Villa are trying to do. They're sucking Everton players in there. And that's leaving... Watkins, Diaby and even Leon Bailey 3v3 at the back if Aston Villa can play through that Everton press on the penalty area big opportunities for them as they get into the Everton half they're on the halfway line with John McGinn but he's lost out as Decore goes down and the free kick is given right in front of the Everton manager Sean Dyche was quite vocal in defending their recent form as Everton prepared to take this free kick just inside the Aston Villa half. They have lost their last three Premier League games, Everton. They had won their previous four without conceding as well. But in that losing run, defeats to Tottenham, to Manchester City and to Wolves, that one was the one that he highlighted was a performance that he didn't play well in. But feels overall, even in that losing run, take the Wolves game aside, they have been quite consistent still regarding their performance levels. And that has been his key message since coming in as Garner plays it to the edge of the area. Calvert Lewin's up there. Aston Villa clear away, but the free kick is given for an earlier foul just outside the penalty area. Anana was appealing for a handball. Free kick it is for Everton. Well, just the best part of 24 yards out or so, just to the left of the D. And this is a good opportunity, Leon Osman. Yeah, we see this so often, don't we, that um, there's always jostling going on as, as the, the ball is delivered into certain areas. And that was a deep ball into the Aston Villa uh, penalty area. And Jared Branthwaite just got goal side of, of Douglas Luiz, got into a really dangerous position. Douglas Luiz just grabbed a big chunk of his jersey and pulled him to the ground. It was one that... You know, you think it's a very naive thing to do to give a cheap free kick away in these positions, but he was certainly concerned that ball was headed into that area that Jared Branthwaite was about to attack. And interesting, because the handball that Anana was appealing for actually came as the ball went into the penalty area after that foul, did hit the arm of Esri Concer, but I think it might have been judged a natural movement, as it were. So, free kick for Everton, Garner is over it, he will go for goal, it's straight into the Aston Villa wall, which jumps high, Harrison keeps it alive, Danjuma will send it to the edge of the penalty area, Anana's up there, won't break for Calvert-Lewin, and Aston Villa will pick it up with Moreno, really yet to get into the game so far, Unai Emery's side, you have the chance to go level 
on points with Liverpool at the top of the Premier League table this afternoon. Nine minutes gone here at Goodison Park and it's Everton so far who are on top. They have the ball outside their own penalty area. Let's head to the European Champions Cup. There's been a try. Bath against Racing 92. Claire Thomas. There has indeed. We're back underway at a packed out wreck and it is first blood to the Parisian Crusaders who scored their second through Fijian Torpedo. Kitione Kami Kamitha. Prodigious scrum half Nolan Lagarek added the extras bringing his personal tally to 12 for the afternoon and his teams to 17. They lead Bath by nine. Chance here for Everton as the ball was whipped in from the left-hand side. Decore taking up a good space inside the penalty area, but Villa able to clear the ball away. But again, danger from Everton down the flanks, Leon Osman. Yeah, Everton have started the better of the two teams, and you're right, in that, in those wider areas, Aston Villa trying to keep this high line. Everton are getting the easy pass in the wide areas, and then they've just got runners from all over the place, really. Everton trying to break into that penalty area, as Aston Villa are then facing their own goal as they, they run back. And I thought for a moment, Onana was going to be penalty spot, open his foot, tap him, but brilliant full-back defending from Moreno, stepping into that position and defending it well. That's a bit of loose possession, but John McGinn was fouled there, and it will be a free kick to Villa just inside the Everton half. Villa in there, home kid as well, the Claret and Blue. Sean Dyche and Unai Emery just a foot away from each other, both shouting, both gesturing to their sides but Sean Dyche although he doesn't look very happy right now Sean Dyche as he turns round to his bench and spreads his hands I don't think he was too happy with the awarding of that Villa free kick but overall he'll be delighted with the way that Everton have started this game what does he look like happy? <laughs> <laughs> the same do you know the same as he looks when he's furious I think that's the thing do you know what having been to several press conferences with Sean Dyche you can never tell when he's joking he has just the best poker face he's so dry and I think sometimes the smiles that he gives are smiles of fury rather than smiles of delight as the ball is over the top flag stays down but Cavalu won't reach it and the ball is all the way through with Emmy Martinez yeah that high line from, from Aston Villa again they do it really well you know nobody drops deep nobody worries that they're not going to be all in sync and all in, in line when, when they play that high line and you know Everton they had two different runners coming at two different times and both went into offside positions. It's so organised, this Villa defence. It's something Everton are going to have to get perfect if they're going to get in. But Everton, at the moment, are getting it perfect defensively with the interceptions. Again, John McGinn trying to play the ball out to the left. It's intercepted. Villa have picked it up on the edge of their own penalty area eventually. But that's, it's not even that bad a ball from John McGinn, but the anticipation there from the Everton back line. And they've done it several times to McGinn. He's trying to set off another attack. That's a better ball. Plays it to Musa Diaby. Here's Bailey on the right. Watkins to the centre. Here is Watkins into the penalty area. Drives the shot in, saved by Pickford. Little ricochet, stabbed away eventually by Tarkovsky for an Aston Villa throw. 13 minutes in, that's the first time Pickford's had anything to do. Yeah, brilliant burst from, from Aston Villa. Shows what they're capable of, and it's that man John McGinn who's had a brilliant season. He's he's playing in, in, on the left-hand side of a midfield four, really, today with Diaby and um, Ollie Watkins up front. But he doesn't want to stay there. The moment he drifts in behind that Everton's midfield, as he did then, gets a lovely touch in to DRB and that's it Aston Villa away and good effort from Ollie Watkins but saved by Pickford Everton have won it from the throw they're struggling to clear their lines though down by that corner flag on the left hand side but eventually do get it up towards halfway Dominic calvert -Lewin will pick it up at the second attempt on the halfway line and send it out to the right hand side just too much on it for Jack Harrison head down won't reach it applauded by his manager Sean Dyche Aston Villa throw well, he's applauding the effort and he's applauding the way he battle to, to gain control of the ball he won't be pleased with how his striker just kicked that ball out of the pitch that should have been an easy pass there are moments as good as, as Dominic Carvalhoon can be when he just loses concentration and just lives, leaves a straight pass in his game not scored since the 29th of October Dominic Calvert-Lewin winner against West Ham four goals for the season really need to get him firing on all cylinders of course he's had his injury problems but form has come into that as well as Onana down was he referee belatedly says yes John McGinn's absolutely fuming with that because Villa were in behind if that whistle didn't go from David Coo yeah everybody stopped didn't they everybody stopped and, and just waited for that decision to be given I wasn't sure it was a foul myself so I can see why McGinn was was frustrated that the free kick was given groans as Jordan Pickford launches it straight to his opposite number Emmy Martinez goals going in in the women's FA Cup Southampton have taken the lead at Sunderland and Nottingham Forest are now 3-0 up at Plymouth. This all in the women's FA Cup. 
which is going on this afternoon as well. This is our first Premier League commentary of the day for you on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Stay with us for the 4.30. Manchester United against Tottenham. John Murray and Clinton Morrison will bring you full coverage of that from 4.30 this afternoon. Nil-nil here at Goodison Park. 15 minutes gone. Aston Villa with a throw with the number 15. Alex Moreno in field to Bubakar Kamara. Now forward to Douglas Luiz hugging that left-hand touch line and Kamara once more will send it back to the halfway line. He was Clement Longley. Aston Villa just enjoy a little bit of possession trying to take the sting out of this fast Everton start and that's a brilliant ball around the corner from Luis to Moreno whips it in it's behind Watkins cleared away to the edge of the area John McGinn will bring it down try to feed Moreno once more and will be dealt with by Everton Harrison and Coleman between them as Coleman tries to clear Moreno got a little touch on it and that sees it spin to Bubakar Kamara midway through the Everton half. Goal is still here at Goodison Park as Kamara spreads it out to the right-hand side and Leon Bailey up against Mikalenko. Back to Kamara once more. Central position, plays the ball forward once again. Leon Bailey won't reach it. And it's straight forward for Pickford who launches it long quickly once again. Looking for the run of Decore, headed away by Esri Konsa. Up to Bubakar Kamara, but Decore's done well to win it and will drive forward now. Lays it to Anana, who tried to beat Calvert-Lewin. And it's all the way through with Emi Martinez. Calvert-Lewin is a touch away there from bringing that under control and bearing down on the Villa goal. Well, it wasn't a bad option that Onana chose. He, he had a couple. He had Harrison on the outside shoulder on the right, pretty much running in behind Moreno. He had that pass to Calvert-Lewin right through the middle of the Aston Villa defence, but he just hit it. He overhit it like a rocket that came off his foot far too hard for Dominic Calvert-Lewin to be able to get any purchase or, or to get anything on and bring it under, under control. But both teams are starting to, to warm up into this game. You see what Everton are trying to do and where they're breaking. All of Aston Villa's players come down this left-hand side. Yeah, Villa coming more back into it in these early stages as John McGinn's delivery is blocked behind by James Tarkovsky. And Villa have a corner, 17 minutes gone, it's still goalless, more goals going in in the Women's FA Cup, Sheffield United taking a surprise lead at Tottenham early stages of that game. Leon Osman. Yeah, it's John McGinn, it's all about John McGinn's position. Does he stay out in a wide area, in which case they go centrally? The moment he drifts in central, can he get spare time on the ball to get himself turned and start Villa attacks? If not, Coleman goes with him, that's when they break down this left-hand side. It's brilliant rotation from Villa. So Leon Bailey comes over to this near side, plays the corner short to Douglas Louise and Everton. Are under a bit of pressure here. Villa have the numbers over. Appeal for offside not given. Bailey will dink it to the edge of the area. The shot is driven in! And it's driven into the bottom corner. Nobody closed down Alex Moreno on the edge of the D. And the shot driven low. It's driven too hard and too fast for Pickford to stop. And Aston Villa find the breakthrough here at Goodison Park. 1-0. Brilliant strike. Absolutely brilliant strike from Alex Moreno. And it's a well-worked set piece from Aston Villa. I'm not sure it was exactly how they planned. I think they may have had one pass too many, but it was the intention that they were trying to get Moreno a shot from the edge of the penalty. I've watched Everton plenty of times, and they don't have anybody on the edge of that penalty area. What Aston Villa do, they start Diaby on the edge, they run him in, they bring Moreno from a deeper position to be unmarked at the edge of the penalty area. They keep the ball, force Everton to move players over to that left-hand side to deal with that short corner. And in doing so, Moreno is completely unmarked on the edge of the penalty. It's brilliant intent and it's a brilliantly worked set-piece again. They've got a set-piece coach, Aston Villa, I think his name's Austin McPhee. And the way they work it is absolutely outstanding. However... VAR could be coming to Everton's rescue. They are checking for a possible offside in the build-up. Now, will this be ruled out? It's a brilliant strike, as Leon Osman says, from Moreno. They're looking at the movement in the oh, centre of Clement Longley. No, I think it's I think I think it's um, on that left-hand side. I think it might be McGinn or, or Bailey, one of the one of the takers. As soon as it happened. Uh, Dan Juma went running up to the uh, the assistant referee on that far side of the field, claiming that there was an offside, and I think it's Leon Bailey. And Dan Juma, if there is an offside, is very lucky because he slipped over on the six-yard line and uh, coming together with, with Longley, and he's on the floor. So we're talking inches, maybe, if, uh, if Bailey is offside. The angles we're seeing, I think he might be. He receives one of the first passes in the build-up to bring in those Everton players over to then get that shot. 
on the edge of the penalty area. It'd be unfortunate for Aston Villa if this is ruled out because it was a wonderful set piece. Everton might just get away with this. Yeah, good spot, Leon. It is looking at Leon Bailey over on the far side. They're having a real think about this. VAR, we're seeing the lines come on, then they come off again. <coughs> well, they're looking at the point of contact. They're looking at when the ball is kicked. And there potentially could be another here, whether they think that there's another Villa player as the shot comes in for Moreno, whether they are looking at whether that's an obstruction for Pickford. It's unclear from the replays that we're seeing, which that we have to say the fans aren't seeing inside the grounds. They've got no idea what's going on. Exactly which incident they're now looking at. Initially, they were looking at where Dan Juma was and a few chants about VAR presume from the Aston Villa fans because it's their goal that might get ruled out but I don't think anybody really in the ground well, is too impressed the, with, the with first what's angle, going on. The first angle we were looking at and I was describing they'd stopped the play and they were starting to put the lines in and if that was what they were doing it looked like he was probably a, a, a yard, half a yard offside maybe certainly just about more than inches but they're moving it on from that they're looking at something else so clearly for whatever reason, they think that that is OK now. Now the looker was long lay in the way of, of the ball. I'm having another look, it's so difficult. And eventually, eventually, the goal is given as offside. And I think that there's been a couple of incidents there. So the, the goal is ruled out. The goal is ruled out. Offside, still nil-nil. No goal for Alex Moreno. No goal for Aston Villa. Unai Emery is telling everybody to calm down. But there were a couple of incidents there, weren't there, as, as best as we can piece it together from the replays we're seeing. There was one incident that they were looking at, an initial offside in the build-up. Then they seemed to be happy with that. A line came on, it disappeared. They moved on to a different incident, which was, was there an Aston Villa player? It looked like to us. Was there an Aston Villa player obstructing the view of Jordan Pickford as the ball came in from Alex Moreno? <laughs> That, that incident is not going to help anyone's opinions of VAR because, as we've just said, that they started looking at the initial angle. We determined from our naked eye that, that it was offside. They put lines in. They did what they did. I'm not sure whether they decided that that was, that was OK. If that was offside, that's it. It's clear. That's the moment it's offside from. Why did they start then filtering through looking for more offsides and more incidents than to see if... Longley was in front of the goalkeeper. It just didn't make sense at all to have been looking at anything after that initial offside. They then went back to that initial version and decided it, it was offside. And whew, that was uh, a frustrating, a frustrating watch. I've got to be honest, a really frustrating watch. VAR, eh? <laughs> anyway, the upshot is ruled out for offside that Aston Villa goal and we are still nil nil at Goodison Park here on Five Live and BBC Sounds midway through the first half here is Alex Moreno who's seen that very good strike it has to be said chalks off in terms of how well he hit it can he get the ball across he plays it behind off Coleman it will be a Villa corner another goal in the Women's FA Cup Blackburn have taken the lead at Crystal Palace that game 13 minutes into the second half and Aston Villa with a corner I think, I think the difficulty is, and, and let's keep an eye on the big screens, because the fans know why the goal's been ruled out in one sense, an offside. But in another sense, they've got no idea, because we haven't seen a still, we haven't seen a freeze frame. Let's see if any more information is given. As Aston Villa prepared to take this corner, it's played short again, this time to the edge of the area. John McGinn plays it back to Leon Bailey, left-hand side of the box for Villa, back to McGinn, who now lifts it in high to the edge of the six-yard box. The header was won initially by Brantho, but hasn't been able to clear it. Overhead clearance eventually gets it out of the box for Everton. Decore will send it forward, McGinn allows it to bounce. He's then shoved by Harrison, and McGinn does well and manages to retain possession. Decore then came flying in, caught McGinn as he played the ball out to the right-hand side. Whistle's gone, free kick to Aston Villa. Everton are up for this. Yeah, he got very lucky there, John McGinn. He thought he was holding off only Jack Harrison, and he was the last man. He was so strong, John McGinn. And he had Harrison on his right shoulder. He was holding up. He turned over his left shoulder as last man, and in came flying Decore, who thought he'd nick the ball off him, and he just got the slightest of touches, John McGinn, and then took a clattering from Decore, actually. Here come Aston Villa. They're enjoying... A good spell at the moment, it's still goalless. After Moreno saw that goal ruled out for an offside somewhere, somewhere in the build-up. It's Jack Harrison, picks it up for Everton as they win back possession. Down the right-hand side, played the pass, but it's split an honour and Calvert-Lewin 
and is collected by Clement Longlake. And Aston Villa have the ball outside their own penalty area. Try in the rugby, Claire Thomas. Both eight, Racing 22. The French outfit have their third, and it is a scriptwriter's dream because it is England's Henry Arundel, raised in Bath, who dots it down to make it seven tries in eight matches. He's notched for the Parisian heavyweights. Bit of controversy around a possible forward pass in the build up, but it is deemed flat, shall we say, and the gap grows further. Bath haven't lost this since October, but have 14 points to make up now with 25 minutes remaining. Here at Goodison Park, it is still goalless between Everton and Aston Villa. 25 minutes gone in the first half as John McGinn picks it up. It's all Villa at the moment. Here is Bubakar Kamara. Sends it out to the right-hand side. And Esri Konsa, nice little one-two with Musa Diaby, but Konsa couldn't take it in his stride. And it's all the way through with Jordan Pickford. Latest scores in the Women's FA Cup. Manchester City are leading 4-0 at Durham. Brighton are 3-0 up at Luton. Burnley are losing 1-0 at home to Birmingham and Nottingham Forest are winning away at Plymouth by four goals to nil. Later on Five Live and BBC Sounds, we will have full commentary from Old Trafford, Manchester United against Tottenham. Do stay with us for that. And as Jordan Pickford has the ball once more inside his own penalty area, I can bring in the former England and Everton midfielder, Liam Osborne. Yeah, defensively, Aston Villa are very 4-4-2 in their structure, but when they're on top in games and when they start to get a bit more of the ball, as they are doing, here, their, their structure becomes completely different. It's it's so fluid in, in what you see. Ollie Watkins plays right at the top, then McGinn and Diaby come as two number 10s. Leon Bailey goes as pretty much a wing-back. Moreno goes as a wing-back. It's so difficult for a team like Everton to defend against that. Well, Pickford's come a long way there. He didn't get there. Seamus Coleman did as Pickford races back into his penalty area. That was a dangerous one for Everton. Big decision from their goalkeeper and Seamus Coleman, I think, helped him out there. I'm not sure Pickford was getting there before Alex Moreno, who was bombing on again down that left-hand side, as Leon Bailey now does down the right for Aston Villa. Goal is here on Five Live and BBC Sounds, as Bailey is well held up by Mikalenko and Danjuma. Plays it back to Konsa in field now to Misa Diaby, and Konsa once more will steer it all the way back to Diego Carlos. Chile afternoon here on Merseyside the grey clouds above us and Leon Osman I've just realised you've stolen my half of the blanket <laughs> Leon being uh, a have I? Uh, yes you have <laughs> Leon being a legend here was, was given a, a very nice navy blanket by a member of uh, club staff here at Everton before kickoff, and has kindly shared it with myself and Natalie Engineer not enough for producer Gary sadly but uh, oh there we go thank you I think as the game's gone on and you're getting colder and colder, you're stealing it all for yourself. But team player Leon Osman, he's given half of it back as Douglas Louise dinks it into the penalty area. Here's Watkins, does get the ball out from under his feet and it trickles just across the goal line. Seamus Coleman gets a foot on, Villa still keeping it alive. Laid off my begin. Here is Douglas Louise inside the penalty area. Now is Bailey, great save, Pickford at his near post. And it goes behind for an Aston Villa corner. Oh! That was agonising for Aston Villa. The shot from Watkins didn't quite have the power, but it dribbled along the six-yard box, almost creeping in at the far post. In the end, it's a good save from Pickford as the move was recycled and Villa have the set piece on the far side. Nil-nil. Yeah, they're in the groove now. Aston Villa, that was a stab shot with the right foot. Leon Bailey just trying to catch Jordan Pickford unawares and he made a really good save with that strong left hand, but brilliant before from Aston Villa. They played the corner short again, they're working it down this right-hand side, won't be reached inside the penalty area by Kamara, it's very good defending at the back by Jack Harrison, but then the ball back to Harrison, it's just played it straight to John McGinn, just outside the Everton penalty area, picked up by Douglas Louise, right-hand side, his cross is blocked away by Mikalenko and goes out for a Villa throw, and all the momentum is with the visitors at the moment, it's still goalless. Yeah, there was so much space for for Decore to, to run into if the ball had been a bit firmer to him or he'd have just protected it more and decided to turn out because it was under hit pass he decided to go backwards and start an Aston Villa attack again but going back to that opportunity before brilliantly intricate play from, from Villa good crisp passing Ollie Watkins finding himself 1v1 with Tarkovsky making a brilliant run in behind him as you mentioned he just sort of toe poked the ball across that goal, uh, goal frame just to beat the outrushing Jordan Pickford who came flying out and then for a moment everybody seemed to hold their breath to see if that would go in but it just trickled by. Ball over the top, Watkins brings it down on the edge of the penalty area, lays it off to Leon Bailey and Anna got a foot in, Douglas Louise will drive, it's blocked away by Garner 
And Everton could counter here with Decore playing it forward, looking for the run of Danjuma, but too much on it. And it's steered back to Emmy Martinez. Latest in the Women's FA Cup. Brighton now 4 0 up at Luton. Arsenal are leading Watford by three goals to nil. And Manchester City have won 4 0 away at Durham. And you're up to date here on Five Live, Leon Osman. That's why he's not good at Decore. We talked before the game, Nadem, and uh, in, the, in the studio. Uh, Ellen and, and, and Julian about Decore playing in this number 10 position and, and what he brings to the team. He's brilliant at supporting the strikers, but you get him in that role there where he's the one playing the passes. He's not as effective, he's not as crisp, he's not as precise uh, in that position. That was an opportunity for Everton. There's been a few opportunities on the counter-attack that they've just not got the time and all the passing right. James Tarkovsky down for Everton. The whistle is gone from referee... David Coote and Ollie Watkins has gone into the book here. So Tarkovsky down. Everton winning the free kick and Tarkovsky is going to require a little bit of treatment here and he's not a player who goes down easily, James Tarkovsky. So we just saw a very quick snapshot of that offside decision that was eventually given to roll out the Aston Villa goal from Alex Moreno. As we see again now, the challenge by Ollie Watkins he just catches Tarkovsky there I mean is that worthy of a yellow card Leon? I think a goalkeeper sorry I think a referee sees the long ball from the goalkeeper and, and sees two players challenge over it he goes over he sees the blood that is clear on on the eye socket of of Tarkovsky and, and he'll give that that decision Tarkovsky's still lying on on the ground physio's trying to deal with with the head um, cut that he has but I didn't think it was a bad challenge from Watkins I think he just uses his arms to get up and I just think it's a coming a coming together unfortunate it's, uh, there's, it's drawn blood but yeah it's I think it's a harsh yellow card but you generally get to see it when you when you see those kind of instances so Tarkovsky still receiving treatment there's been a goal in the women's FA Cup between Chelsea and West Ham Henry Moran is at Kings Meadow Chelsea have got the equaliser and it's substitute Mia Fischel who has scored a fine finish into the roof of the net from inside the penalty area the American substitute getting the three time winners at the last three tournaments back on level terms Chelsea won West Ham won and let's head for an update from Rugby Union's European Champions Cup. Claire Thomas. Both ring the changes in their forward pack and the fresh bruises have an immediate impact because a series of granity pick and goes culminate in wrecking ball. Alfie Barbary dotting down. Spencer converts. 19 minutes remain and it is Bath 15, Racing at 22. So James Tarkovsky is still being treated here on the pitch. 13 minutes plus added time to play in this first half. Goalless between Everton and Aston Villa at Goodison Park. So, Leon Osman, we can get into VAR. We've had an explanation for why <laughs> they ruled out Alex Moreno's goal. So I'll read it and then we'll see what we think. So, as we said at the time, it looked like they were checking a, a couple of offsides. As Leon said, the first one looked clear, but then they went and checked another offside as well later in the phase of play. So, Leon Bailey was offside in the first check. That's the one that Leon Osman, next to me, picked out. But the VAR checked the long lay offside, which happened as Alex Moreno hit the shot, to check whether it was the same phase of play. So, basically, they decided that Leon Bailey was offside, but did it happen too far previously to Moreno hitting the shot? Is it the same phase of play? Still a little bit confused, well, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's the same corner kick, so I don't see how it's a different, a different phase of play. They've not moved out of, of that area of the pit pitch. It's a, it's a corner kick. It did not make sense to me at all. And having watched it back as well, I was saying, I was questioning Dan Juma and saying maybe, you know, he was get, got caught in the position and nearly played Leon Bailey onside. But actually, I called it a coming together with Longley. Longley is actually trying to wrestle. Dan Juma to keep him deep to keep everybody on side so even that could have been deemed as a foul had uh, had VAR looked at that but in regards to the offside yeah I, I don't understand what took so long so Aston Villa in possession inside their own penalty area and I wonder why you you wouldn't check the thing that happened immediately before the goal first off you know or maybe we just saw it in a different order maybe they did who knows <laughs> who knows the point is there was an offside in there and I suppose VAR would say the point is we got the right decision. Yeah, but there are ways of going about things, and you know, you, you look for for offsides. And once the first initial offside offence has happened, and we could see it was offside, they didn't draw the lines early or clear enough for us to see it on the screen. But it was clearly offside, and whatever comes after that is irrelevant. So it doesn't matter if if Longley was was offside. It doesn't matter if there was a wrestler match. It doesn't matter anything like that. Once that is offside, 
there's no point in looking any further, so I couldn't understand what they were doing. And as you say, as Villa have the ball just inside the Everton half, still goalless here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Phase of play, I mean, I understand that logically and theoretically, but there was no point in which you think, oh, you know, Everton have had a, a clear opportunity to, to clear the ball here. But, you know, they, that's what VAR will, will look at and they'll double-check. And, and I think you can understand, as, as Villa still have the ball inside their own half now, it's a break off, ball over the top, looking for Ollie Watkins as they've done several times. Everton deal with it. Seamus Coleman will clear away. Headed on by Alex Moreno back towards the Everton penalty area. Good header out by Branthwaite to Calvert Lewin, who tried to feed Anana. Anana got there but couldn't quite control the ball forward. Carlos under a lot of pressure there, did well and clears away for Aston Villa. And Leon Bailey has it, sends it back to Ponce. Ponce is then challenged by Garner and Dantuma picks it up. Play allowed to continue. Dantuma into the penalty area, shot blocked away by Carlos. It will be a corner to Everton, nil-nil still. Good closing down from Everton. I mean, it's, it's been uh, largely Aston Villa that have dominated in an attacking sense in the last 10, 15 minutes or so. And Ponce just getting caught on the ball, good pressure to do that and once Everton got into that final third yes Villa got players back quick but Everton had maybe five or six players inside the Villa penalty area and Dan Juma tried to go alone the moment you do that you have to at least get a shot on target at least trouble the goalkeeper he didn't do either but he did get a corner nil nil good game this corner swung in Calvert Lewin's down inside the area Tarkovsky went for the header and flicks it wide as Calvert Lewin gets back up to his feet and spreads his arms in the direction of referee David Coote Aston Villa will have a goal kick. Yeah, just, just briefly going back to VAR and then we'll move on. I suppose, you know, there is so much scrutiny, there's so much criticism, whether they get involved, whether they don't get involved, that maybe it's a case of almost overthinking it and thinking, oh gosh, actually, was it the same phase of play and we need to check that? And, you know, I think we know, don't we, that it's causing frustration to fans, to managers, and perhaps that is coming into play in terms of trying to be absolutely perfect with the decisions whereas actually you know in real time it looked as though it was fairly straightforward Emi Martinez has taken all of that time to, to take this goal kick for Aston Villa Crystal Palace have equalised against Blackburn in the Women's FA Cup it's now 1-1 it's Villa again play their way out of the penalty area a little bit dangerously stolen eventually by James Tarkovsky he was moving freely after receiving treatment for that head injury and the ball goes out of play for an Aston Villa throw nil-nil eight minutes to play that's out of time in this first half, Leon Osman. They are taking chances at the back, especially Emi Martinez. He's, he's a very confident goalkeeper, there's no doubt about that, but he's, uh, he'll probably say he's been precise and he's been perfect, but he's very fortunate. All over the top, Bailey looks very much offside. Brunthway came across and guided it back to Pickford and now the jeers are because the flag did belatedly go up and again, it's, one, it's not VAR, but it's one of these refereeing things where they're told to delay the flag if it's marginal or it's close and they think there could be a goal-scoring opportunity. Would have been a goal-scoring opportunity if Bailey got in, but even from our angle, very much looked offside. So, anyway, we play on. <laughs> oh, he'd be a referee. Oh, no, no. Over the halfway line for Everton, stabs it forward. Harrison will chase. Moreno, though, had half a yard on him, uses that. And she'll clear for Aston Villa. It goes down for Aston Villa rather softly, does win the free kick. There was a little bit of pressure there from Harrison right in front of the assistant referee on this near side. And Aston Villa get the set piece, nil-nil. Yeah, there might have been the slightest touch there from um, Harrison. It's it, it's not enough to send Moreno to the floor. It's, it's naive from Harrison, but how often... Do we see those free kicks given? It's one of the most frustrating things I find in the game. I've got to be honest that as, as a, an attacking player or as a player that will go and close down defenders in those positions and quite often jump on the floor and get a free kick. I'm sure the defenders union out there will say they're free kicks all day long, but frustrating in my opinion. The big roar you heard there of disapproval was because Emi Martinez, in taking that free kick, repositioned the ball by about half a centimetre. <laughs> loves to wind people up Emi Martinez and here he goes playing it out to the right hand side in concert forward now to Leon Bailey interchange doesn't quite work out for Aston Villa but Kamara will pick it up and again they go back into their own penalty area Martinez will play it out to the left hand side as you say Leon Osman they really are taking some risks there and Everton on that occasion can't take advantage but on a couple of times they have stolen it they've been very close to doing so ball over the top long again looking for Ollie Watkins he picks it up left hand side of the penalty area pulls the ball across it's behind John McGinn and will be cleared away by Jack Harrison end to end here at Goodison Park as we approach the final 
five minutes of this first half here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Jack Harrison goes down, wins the free kick. Crystal Palace now lead Blackburn by two goals to one in the Women's FA Cup. Charlton have a fourth at Ipswich, that's 4-1. Reading have gone a goal up against Wolves. And at the Africa Cup of Nations, the latest Nigeria trailing by a goal to nil to Equatorial Guinea. So let's head for an update from the rugby, Claire Thomas. West Country tails are well and truly up now and Bath have roared into life before a capacity wreck. England's Joe Fock and a singer finished a brilliant backs play and Spencer's conversion levelled things up. It is 22 apiece. We've got a grandstand finish on our hands. Thank you very much, Claire. Here a little delay to the restart of play. Alex Moreno has gone down and will receive a bit of treatment. The Villa medical staff being waved on and I think Decore is saying there will look go off. You can clearly walk, which he can, leave the field of play so we can get on with it. But referee David Coote has already called the medical staff on and it's a blow to the face for Alex Moreno. They've got a tissue to his nose. Looked as though as well that Jordan Pickford wasn't moving perhaps too freely there, but he's moved away from the dugout and is now going to have a conversation with James Garner in the centre circle. Now we're just seeing a replay there of how Moreno came about that. And what is a nosebleed? He was just hitting the face with a, a pass from, from Harrison as he tried to play the ball over the top. And yeah, he's on his feet getting treatment, so he stood up. He can clearly he can clearly walk, but the referee is right in, in having the physios just treat him where he is and, and making sure that, that that nosebleed is seen to. So he has now moved off the pitch, Alex Moreno, and we will get it underway with this Everton free kick just outside the centre circle. In the Women's FA Cup, Watford have got a consolation at Arsenal. That's 3-1. Nottingham Forest now 5-0 up at Plymouth, and Nigeria have equalised against Equatorial Guinea at the Africa Cup of Nations. 1-1. Ball to the edge of the Villa penalty area. Cleared away over his head by Bubakar Kamara. Headed back in by Ghana towards Anana. Cleared away by Aston Villa and Musa Diaby underneath it. Alex Moreno still receiving treatment. I think he's struggling to stop that nosebleed, Moreno. So Villa temporarily down to 10. Painful one for Anana, who goes down as the ball was cleared into him in a rather delicate area. Everton still possession back. Decore won't keep that in. Goes out of play for a Villa throw. It's all got a bit frenetic in the last couple of minutes. Leon Osman, it's still 0-0. Yeah, it's not when you want that. I don't think it it's him where you wouldn't want to. I think it was just in the gut. I think it maybe knocked the wind out of him. Not like he was just gasping for breath there. Onana on the floor, trying to suck in every little bit that he could. But James Garner just went into one of those tackles that you know you can't lose. You've got uh, you've been a little bit exposed behind you. you. You're one of the last men in that position. There's an opportunity to break, so he made sure he won that ball in two, and so he hit it probably as hard as he could into the, the gut of Onana from only about two or three yards away, so I'm surprised he was feeling the effects of that. Well, he is back up to his feet and moving freely. Alex Moreno back in as well for Aston Villa. Still goalless here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as DRB under pressure. Goes back once more to Diego Carlos and long lay will bring it forward for Aston Villa. Lovely ball to find McGinn on the halfway line in the centre of the pitch. Again with a couple of turns to evade the Everton pressure and Douglas Luiz now will send it out to Alex Moreno on the left-hand side. McGinn's continued his run. Moreno ran into Seamus Coleman. And this history-making afternoon for Coleman, becoming Everton's record appearance maker in the Premier League. Clears the ball out of play under pressure for an Aston Villa throw. Nil-nil. Aston Villa, remember, with the chance to move level with Liverpool at the top of the Premier League this afternoon. Everton looking to move three points clear of the relegation zone. Victory would do that for either side. So far, we're goalless. Here is Moreno. Has the throw for Aston Villa. Taken a little sloppily of shouts for a foul throw but not heeded by referee David Coote and Watkins will steer it back eventually to Moreno plays it in field to Bubakar Kamara who goes back to Longley good pressure by Everton and that's applauded and appreciated by Goodison Park forcing Aston Villa all the way back to Emi Martinez bright enough 5-0 up away to Luton in the Women's FA Cup and 6-0 Nottingham Forest now lead at Plymouth. Here is Ollie Watkins, drives, deflected by Coleman, good block and stamped forward by Anana. Here is Danjuma, hasn't seen too much of the ball, but that's a brilliant one to Calvert-Lewin. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin's in behind for Everton, up against Martinez, who saves and it ricochets off Calvert-Lewin and spins out to the right-hand side of the penalty area. Reclaimed by Decore, tricks his way inside the box, the shot driven and just about saved by Martinez from the edge 
edge of the penalty area. It didn't necessarily have the power behind it by Garner, but Martinez had to adjust, didn't get the strongest hand to it, but does push it behind for an Everton corner. But Leon Osman, Dominic Calvert-Lewin has to score that one-on-one. Oh, absolutely, he does. He's, he's run through from the halfway line. He pretty much stays on side because he's run from his own half and he's clear, there's no pressure behind him. And he does actually send Martinez the wrong way. And Martinez just saves it with his legs. Calvert-Lewin goes along the floor. He doesn't put any any height on it. It just gives Martinez the opportunity to make that save in that position. But as two saves go in a short space, a short spell of time, we're talking probably 15 seconds between those two saves. They were outstanding goalkeeping from from Emmy Martinez. The first, the one v one. The second unawares low left hand shot he had to palm around the post he got just enough on it from that James Garner effort brilliant double save he might be busy again here because Everton have a corner it's swung in low it's poor groans around Goodison Park as it's headed away by John McGinn at the near post Diaby trying to bring it down the left hand side but can't keep it in we have entered eight minutes of added time at the end of the first half here at Goodison Park and this one is just bubbling up nicely, Leon Osman. Yeah, that means I'm going to miss my train home, that, that eight minutes. But the game itself, as you say, it, it probably doesn't need half-time at the moment. It's just getting to that position where Aston Villa are, are knowing how to get in the spaces against Everton. Everton there have just fit, really beat the offside trap for the first time. The run and the pass both perfectly timed. So, yeah, as the game's going, we're starting to see opportunities. Maybe they'll let you keep your blanket to make up for it. <laughs> I might need it. Though to Aston Villa. McGinn dispossessed and Garner sends it forward. Well anticipated by Diego Carlos and Douglas Luiz, who hasn't really got on the ball too much for Villa. And he's been dispossessed as Garner sends it forward. Good interception by Longley. And Honor will keep it alive out to the left-hand side. And Danjuma into the penalty area, plays the ball in. Headed away by Aston Villa, John McGinn will bring it down. Well challenged by Decore. Harrison has it now, 25 yards out, drifts the ball in. It's met at the far side and tamely steered into the arms of Emi Martinez by Vitaly Mikolenko. Yeah, not the best of, of efforts to, to fire that ball back across the face of the penalty area from Mikolenko, but he was offside anyway. The, the, the opportunity was there to get him in. Harrison just delayed far too much. He, he dummied and then shimmied and then decided to play the pass. You can't do that against a, a, a disciplined and structured offside trap that Aston Villa have. You have to play the first thing you see. But Villa are carving out the space once again down this left-hand side now. Did Coleman catch Moreno there? David Coote says yes, whistle's gone. Coleman ran towards the referee, wagging his finger. He needs to move away here, Seamus Coleman. So he doesn't go into the book either for the challenge or for his protest afterwards. Moreno's still down. Free kick has been given to Villa on this wide left-hand side just up from the edge of the penalty area and Coleman now does move away. What do we think, Leon Osman? Is he valid in his appeals or did he catch Moreno there? It certainly looked initially, didn't it, that it was that it was a foul. I don't think it was a, a, a booking initially. I just thought he cut inside really well. I'm just wondering, just see the replay, did he just kick him on the shin a little bit and it wasn't the initial round the ankle that you, you generally look for Seamus Colm was adamant that um, that it wasn't a free kick he was adamant, went straight to the referee well it is the set piece to Aston Villa and I think as Leon says you know it did look like a foul and there's a little bit of contact there and Douglas Louise is over this for Aston Villa looking to break the deadlock Deep in out of time here at the end of the first half. We've played three and a half minutes, still got four and a half minutes left to play. Douglas Louise will swing it in from this right hand side. It's poor, it's headed away and then cleared by Harrison, who looks to the sky in frustration because it was immediately chested down by Moreno. Over to another player down on the edge of the penalty area as Watkins picks it up. It's in the back of the net from Longley, but the whistle's already gone for that foul on the edge of the box. <laughs> Everton has stopped playing and they have a set piece just outside their own penalty area. Latest in the Women's FA Cup, Crystal Palace 3, Blackburn 1, Sunderland 0, Southampton 2, Arsenal 4, Watford 1 and Liverpool have taken the lead at Bristol City. They lead by a goal to nil as Watkins charges down that clearance from Seamus Coleman, bounces out of play. And Everton throw deep in their own territory, still goalless 
Four and a half minutes of the minimum eight added on we have played at the end of this first half on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Do you know what? That was such an unnecessary foul as well from Diego Carlos. The, the crossfield pass to, to Ollie Watkins inside the Everton penalty area was, was brilliant and there was no chance that Mikulenko was going to be able to make that distance up and Diego Carlos just blocked him and stopped him getting there and, and gave the referee an easy decision to make but you know, if that ball had gone to Watkins, he fired it across. It could have been an Aston goal, a, a Villa goal there, but just an unnecessary foul. Good play by Bubakar Kamara, trying to slide it into Watkins. Tarkovsky was there. Cleared away by Seamus Coleman. Calvert-Lewin is penalised for a foul on Clement Longley. And Aston Villa will have a free kick midway through their own half. We're still goalless. Arsenal have got a fifth against Watford in the Women's FA Cup. They lead by five goals to one. Coming up later on Five Live this afternoon, Commentary from Old Trafford. Manchester United taking on Tottenham with John Murray and Clinton Morrison. You can see all the highlights on Match of the Day 2 this evening, tonight on BBC One. And if you are interested in awards ceremonies, we've got coverage of the best FIFA Football Awards 2023 tomorrow evening. You can watch that from 7.30 on iPlayer, the BBC Sport website and app. Aston Villa in possession midway through their own half. Nil-nil here. But it's been a good nil-nil, Leon Osman. Yeah, slow burner. I think that uh, both teams just seem to be weighing each other up to see the best way of beating each other. Here goes Diaby. Pickford out quickly. Pickford does well. Gets there on the edge of his penalty area. As Diaby flew down that right-hand side for Aston Villa. And Pickford thought about releasing it quickly, but is just slowing the play down. As we have two minutes of added time to play at the end of this first half. To the rugby, Claire Thomas. Bath have the lead, their bonus point try and the wreck on its feet. It was Will Muir with a trademark gallop into the corner converted by Spencer. They lead 29 points to five, but with four remaining have had Alfie Barbary sent off again. So have to defend that lead down a player. Here are Aston Villa in possession just outside their own penalty area. Still goal is here at Goodison Park. Deep in out of time at the end of the first half as the ball is cleared out of play for an Aston Villa throw. Yeah, just talking about about the game, it's it simmered along nicely. It's it, it's got the potential to really burst into life. You feel that both uh, both are jabbing at the minute without really using that knockout blow. Both are capable. I think if one team scores, I think the other team will come all out to try and get the equaliser, and then we will see uh, a real high energy, high quality game. At the moment, I think it's just simmering along and. You know, again, I, I'm not sure it needs half-time this game, but I think both managers would probably be pleased to get their teams in just to just to, just to, to give them information they need in, in both areas of the field, both offensively and defensively. Throw to Villa. Alex Moreno will take it right in front of his manager, Unai Emery. He's taken it poorly, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin has it for Everton, cleared away by Diego Carlos. You have to say that Carlos and Longley have really excelled as a centre-half pairing so far. The time that Aston Villa look most vulnerable is when they play an out-of-their-own penalty area from the back. Yeah, it is. Um, and you can see why they're taking those chances, because all of Aston Villa's best moves have actually come when they played through their Everton's press and got McGinn and Diaby in, in pockets of space. So I could see why they're doing it. But you're right, Everton have, apart from that Dominic Calvert-Lewin 1v1, well, they timed his run brilliantly. Everton's best opportunities have come with winning the ball back in the final third. Amy Martinez takes so long to clear that ball that the referee says, go on then, half-time. <laughs> we'll blow the whistle. So, 0-0 nil -nil at Goodison Park. Second half commentary to come here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. The big talking points, Alex Moreno having that goal ruled out correctly, eventually in the end, by VAR for offside. But a confusing process really once again for even us in the press box who can see the replays, let alone the fans in the stadium. You can just see that they're looking at an offside. But right decision in the end was reached. And at the other end, Dominic Calvert-Lewin not scored since the end of October. That was Everton's biggest chance of the half. One-on-one -on -one with Emi Martinez. Credit to the goalkeeper but again needs to find some form cover to him yeah I think when when you've got a striker full of full of confidence I think when they go through with with that much time and and, and that uh, position than they get to I think everybody just has that level of expectation the stadium have that has that level of expectation I think the word Dominic is right now in his game I think there was a intake of breath I think there was a is this his moment is he finally going to get back on the score sheet I don't think there was a a real confidence throughout the, the ground that he was going to convert that chance and I think you saw that he went he went low he did send the goalkeeper the wrong way but 
no real conviction to his effort, no real corner. He didn't really go for a corner, he just tried to hit the target. So, yeah, he's, he's played all right, he's got about the pitch, he's done a, a, a good job, but he has to start getting back on that goal scoring sheet. Half time at Goodison Park. 45 minutes for either side to find a goal because it's goalless at the break. Yeah, an informed Dominic Calvert Lewin, Leon Osman, doesn't think there, does he? He just puts it away. But but where he is and with everything that he's had to deal with being in and out, it just looked like he, he had enough time to think about what the moment was. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know, when when you when you're searching for a goal. You probably want one of those chances where it comes to you so quickly that, you know, instinct takes over and you just convert or, you know, as you mentioned, but there he had he, thinking time from that, just into the Aston Villa half all the way through to probably the edge of the penalty area. And he's probably thinking about the surroundings. He's looking at the goalkeeper. He's wondering, is someone going to chase him? Is he wondering, should he slow down? He's got so many thoughts going through his mind, except, you know, where I'm, I'm just going to put this ball into the back of the goal. And, Take, give credit to Emmy Martin as he stood up well. He made himself as big as he possibly could. He made a brilliant save from there. Followed it up within the next 10 seconds with a, probably an even better save with his with his left hand. So, now let's not forget he's a quality goalkeeper who loves those kind of duels and those kind of situations. But it's a chance that Dominic Calvert-Lewin needs to convert. Leon, Vicky, thank you very much for the time being. So Everton nil, Aston Villa nil. I'm live here now at Old Trafford, looking down at the pitch with the sprinklers on in front of us. Um, there are some of those sort of red velvet barriers that you might get in, a, in an old school bank right next to the pitch. And that's probably because the bank is here, the new bank of Manchester United, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. We haven't laid eyes on him just yet. When he does get here, he'll probably only be sitting a few yards away to my left-hand side. A few moments ago, we were... Down down in the media room here and you could see a string of the uh, top members of the written press suddenly sort of dispersed and disappeared so I wonder if uh, there's been a bit of an audience with Sir Jim going on we'll keep our eyes peeled for him of course we're bringing you full commentary of Manchester United versus Tottenham from here at Old Trafford at half past four uh, what about Manchester United's uh, women's team taking on Newcastle in the women's FA Cup we'll take you to that in a second after we've heard about Chelsea versus West Ham which has finished Henry Moran yeah Chelsea have won the last three women's FA Cups but they've been given a real test here by West Ham end of 90 minutes Chelsea won West Ham won an equaliser in the second half from Chelsea sub me official has taken us to uh, extra time potentially penalties could have been won this game by Lauren James in added time but she fired over stand by for another half an hour Chelsea won West Ham won but there was never any danger of that at least sports finish finishing Manchester United 5 Newcastle nil, and a big win for Manchester City as well 4 nil at Durham FC uh, kicking off by the way in an hour's time Moneyfield the second lowest ranked team left in the competition we spoke to their manager a little bit earlier so we'll definitely have an eye on their tie against London City uh, loads more to come second and half commentary on the way from Goodison Park and then we'll be focused on here at Old Trafford. We'll get the news now on Five Live with Richard Foster. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thanks, Steve. Good afternoon. Five migrants have died and one is critically ill after getting into difficulty on a small boat in the channel near Calais last night. Dozens of people are thought to have been on board. The government says its Rwanda bill will save lives by deterring illegal crossings. But Enver Solomon from the Refugee Council says ministers should change their approach. These deaths have to be a wake-up call to the government, so they take decisive action to get round the table with the French and negotiate some kind of safe passage without having to take dangerous journeys. The Foreign Secretary is refusing to rule out further strikes on Houthi fighters in Yemen. The group is supported by Iran and has repeatedly attacked shipping in the Red Sea. David Cameron says that UK and US airstrikes send a clear message. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza says nearly 24,000 Palestinians have died since the war there began 100 days ago. Israeli forces say they've killed 14 Hamas fighters in the southern city of Khan Yunis in the last 24 hours. Authorities in Iceland say defences around a fishing town in the southwest of the country are protecting it from an erupting volcano. Grindavik has been evacuated. People only returned there recently after another eruption last month. Newcastle United's Joe Linton's been burgled. Police were called to his home in Northumberland last night while Newcastle were playing Manchester City. There are no details yet about what was taken. Officers are appealing for information. And Denmark's Queen Margareta II has abdicated after 52 years on the throne. Thousands of people have gathered in Copenhagen to watch the ceremonies in which her son Frederick and his Australian wife Mary have been proclaimed King and Queen. 
BBC Five Live, the voice of the UK. Throughout January, Five Live is bringing you stories about the police from around the UK. Policing the UK on BBC Five Live. From new recruits on what it's like to join to how safe people feel in their homes. And out on the streets of Britain, hearing about your experience with the police. Policing the UK. On Five Live throughout January. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. On Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Good afternoon from Old Trafford. Manchester United versus Tottenham in full on Five Live at half past four. We'll be back to Goodison before long for second half commentary. Everton nil, Aston Villa nil in the fourth round of the Women's FA Cup, which is the stage where the WSL sides come into it. Chelsea, who've won the last three editions of the competition, are heading to extra time. They drew one all in 90 minutes with West Ham at Kings Meadow. Big potential story at the moment. Sheffield United of the Championship leading 1-0 against Tottenham of the WSL at half time. In the one o'clock kickoffs it finished Arsenal 5 Watford 1 Bristol City 0 Liverpool 1 Palace 3 Blackburn 1 Ipswich 1 Charlton 4 Plymouth 1 Nottingham Forest 6 Luton 0 Brighton 6 and Sunderland 0 Southampton 2 uh, these ones now at half time Burnley 0 Birmingham 1 Reading 1 Wolves 0 and earlier today Manchester United and Manchester City women comfortably won their fourth round ties uh, United beat Newcastle 5 0 City 4 0 winners over Durham full time in the Champions Cup Rugby Bath versus Raffing 92, Claire Thomas. Bath have done it and survived a seesawing blockbuster at the rack. It's a bonus point victory for Johan van Graan's side, which means that next Sunday's trip to Toulouse will be a mouth-watering top-of-the-table clash with the five-time champions. Tries from Dutoy, Barbary, Thokona Singer and Muir and nine points from the boot of Spencer. Raffing 92 might sit at the summit of the top 14, but their Champions Cup campaign lies in tatters. Full-time here, as their resident saxophonist struts his stuff, Bath triumph, 29 points to 25. It's the final of the Masters Snooker, of course, this afternoon. Ronnie O'Sullivan taking on Ali Carter as he attempts to claim a record-extending eighth title at the Alexandra Palace. We have Jamie Broughton. And this is a special moment, Steve, in snooker history as it's the 50th Masters final. Ronnie O'Sullivan is appearing in his 14th final while it's a second appearance for Ali Carter. Carter vowed to attack, attack, attack in this match and that's what he's done so far. He's knocked in two centuries. He now leads by four frames to two. There's also been a 100 break from the seven-time champion. We're now into frame seven with O'Sullivan back at the table. We've got this frame and one more to play in this session. O'Sullivan will want to get out of this all square at four frames all. Ten is the magic number to be crowned champion. At the Australian Open, both men's and women's defending champions threw on day one. Novak Djokovic, though, had to overcome a really spirited performance from the 18-year-old Dino Prismic of Croatia. In the end, Djokovic won in four sets. Arena Sabalenka needed just 53 minutes to win her first round match against Germany's Ella Seidel. Uh, Britain's Jodie Burridge is out, lost in three sets to Kamara Korpach. After the match, she told Russell Fuller how frustrated she was with herself. Yeah, definitely. Um, That's what you know, kind of started to creep in today because I've lost to her twice, I guess, as well, before those emotions and and those experiences start to, start to creep in and I kind of just need to, you know, say, no, I've got this. And, you know, I played a great first set um, and, and she wasn't there. And then she picked it up and, you know, tennis is a sport where there's someone on the other side of the net that's you know pushing back at you and I need to respond to that a little bit better but I need to back myself that I'm good enough to do that as well um and that's what I just need to learn in in these tougher matches against these tougher opponents that's Jodie Burridge tennis breakfast on five sports extra every morning for the next fortnight they'll be on air from 6 a.m tomorrow Andy Murray in action on day two let's go back into the women's FA Cup and that tie that's gone to extra time at Kings Meadow Henry Moran yeah a couple of minutes gone of the the additional 30 minutes Chelsea won West Ham won West Ham's first half goal looked for a long while like it could give them a shock victory uh, but Chelsea did find that equaliser in the second half they've been far the stronger side 23 shots on goal 12 corners to none but West Ham spirited still in there early stages of extra time Chelsea won West Ham won 
Uh, there was one game in the Championship earlier. Jake Livermore scored two absolute belters as Watford beat QPR 2-1 at Loftus Road. So Watford eighth in the league. QPR uh, stay 23rd. They're five points from safety. And at the Africa Cup of Nations, Nigeria have equalised now against Equatorial Guinea. Uh, no surprise, it's through Victor Osserman. It's one all there. Ghana play Cape Verde. Egypt take on Mozambique later on. Back to Goodison shortly for second half commentary. Uh, then it'll be all eyes on where we're sitting right now. Old Trafford for Manchester United versus Tottenham. Correspondent John Murray alongside me. Good afternoon. Hi, Steve. And uh, with all due respect to yourself, John, there is another individual who we will have our eyes on, I believe. Yes, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is going to be here today. Uh, they actually moved in that, that new poster they've had in Manchester, the red poster, with uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe with his arms wide open reading Manchester across the bottom. Uh, I'm, I'm told that that was put back just next to the entrance where Sir Jim would be driving in just uh-huh. to give him an extra welcome. So uh, it's very much going to be eyes left to see uh, exactly what he looks like and I suppose how he reacts to what happens on the pitch. I guess he'll be sitting next to Sir Dave Brailsford. And even though you know we're still waiting for the rubber stamping, the uh, the, the formal nod for the, uh, the Ineos group buying into Manchester United, we're waiting for that to be confirmed. Clearly, this is uh, a... a very much a direction of travel and uh, you know they've got their hands all over this haven't they and look Eric Ten Hag has said John as one would expect you know we've had very positive conversations etc etc but does today feel like day one in terms of the scrutiny that Eric Ten Hag might come under because now the person who is going to be the new 25% owner who's in charge of all the football operations is watching yeah, I think you could look at it that way. I think from the point where Dave Brailsford was in here, you could. I think we we were looking in that direction. But I think it does feel it's an extra step forward. Uh, I think we we might hear some of the things that he's been saying on his on his arrival at Old Trafford on the day of a Manchester United match a little bit later on. Um, so that'll be interesting to hear w- what the message is from from Sir Jim what what's the first thing that he wants to say what's the message that he wants to put across to the Manchester United supporters about what might lie ahead I think uh, you know we'll we'll hopefully have that for us a little bit later on once uh, once we get to that point interesting I didn't know that looking forward to that um also looking forward to seeing Tottenham Hotspur possibly with a couple of new signings if not from the start then probably at some point yeah uh, Dragosheen and Werner all the paperwork's been done so they're with the squad so they they could be involved today in some form uh, also I'm told that Christian Romero who's been out with a thigh injury is, is here he has travelled with the squad so he's in the picture as well and obviously we'll be talking about Andre Onana won't we playing for Manchester United when round about this time tomorrow he'll be playing for Cameroon <laughs> Best, best of luck with that. <laughs> um, I mean, it says something, doesn't it? I'm not entirely sure what, but it says something. What about Timo Werner then? D- did you expect to see him back in the Premier League? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily, because it wasn't a massive success when he was here last. But a, a couple of things. He hasn't been playing for RB Leipzig. He's out of the German squad. And Germany are hosting a tournament this summer. And he wants to get back in. So he's another one of those players this month. And that's, a, that's an entirely different group, isn't it, of players who will be on the move this month. Those who who want to make sure either they're in international squads for the Euros or that they're in international teams. And I think he's one of them. I've just seen, uh, John, something which makes me feel very old indeed. So right down on the touchline there, uh, there were two young men who approached Manchester United legend. And Gary Pallister and it looked like they were asking him for a photograph but they actually just thought he was a random bloke yeah. standing there because they actually asked him to take a photo of them yeah well <laughs> listen join the club when uh, when I see like Lewis Miley being involved in a match like that yesterday at 17 years old and you know that's a regular occurrence now teenagers uh, who really step up to the plate so uh, you know these, these signs you've got all this to come Steve <laughs> These are the early days of this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, we'll have full commentary from here inside Old Trafford once we are done at Goodison Park. Second half commentary then of Everton versus Aston Villa with Leon Osman and Vicky Sparks. Thank you very much, Steve. Welcome back to Goodison as Everton take to the field for this second half. Goalless as we approach the second period of play, still waiting for Aston Villa to make their way back onto the pitch. But if you are Sean Dyche, Leon Osman, if you are Unite. Emery, Leon Osman, what are you saying to your charges as we approach the second half? Um, I'm saying it's not about 45 minutes. I'm saying scoreline's nil-nil. We've done some good things. We've done some not-so-good things. Here's how we go and win the game. And I think both managers will have a clear idea 
of, of how they go in the game. Certainly not conceding a goal will be very high on the agenda, but here's the slight changes we need to make to, to move the opposition around to go and score our goals. We need to be a bit more clinical, um, and we probably need to show a little bit more desire. We might have to expose ourselves slightly in doing so, but there's a real opportunity for three points, and both teams need them for different reasons at different ends of the, of the table. So we'll see which team wants it more in the second half. So Villa back out on the pitch. It will be Everton to get us underway. James Garner over the ball. Everton will be kicking from right to left in this second half towards the Gladys Street end in the blue shirts, the white shorts and the white socks. Aston Villa in their traditional home kit as well. The Claret and Blue as Garner does get us underway. No changes for either side at half-time, so we will take you through the lineup shortly as... Everton look to latch onto the ball just outside the penalty area, can't do so. Emi Martinez has it back inside the box for Aston Villa, who will clear through long late over the halfway line. Tarkovsky heads the ball away for Everton, Garner can't latch onto it. Kamara will pick it up in the orange boots just outside the centre circle. A little loose pass to Concert, but Concert does well there. Nifty footwork retains possession and rolls it back to Diego Carlos. So Everton with Pickford in goal. The back four of Seamus Coleman making history today, becoming their record appearance maker in the Premier League. 355 all up. As John McGinn whips the ball in from the left-hand side. Bailey was in there. He and Mikalenko both missed the header. Mikalenko, Mikalenko will retain it for Everton and clear up over halfway. So, Coleman, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Mikalenko complete that Everton back line. Anana and Ghana ahead of them with Harrison, Decore and Danjuma supporting Calvert-Lewin, who missed a huge chance in the first half. One-on-one -on -one with Martinez, who made the save up front. Concert with the throw for Aston Villa as Kamara goes down wins the free kick right in front of the Everton boss Sean Dyche. So, Villa with Martinez in goal, the back four of Concert, Carlos, Longley and Moreno. Ahead of them, John McGinn, Douglas Luiz, Kamara and Bailey. Diaby supporting Watkins up front, but as Leon Osman alongside me has said in the first half, when Villa are in possession, it is a very fluid forward line as Diaby picks it up on this right-hand side for now. Cleared away by Branthwaite, off Diaby, and it will be an Everton throw. Leon Osman. Yeah, just subtle changes at the start of this second half. Oh, sorry, I was uh, nearly choked on me uh, on my chocolate bar there. Uh, start, start of the second half. It seems like Decore has gone right up front alongside Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Very 4-4-2 from Everton. Here is Diaby almost latching onto that ball inside the area, cleared away by Tarkovsky. And it will be a Villa corner to the Women's FA Cup goal. Chelsea West Ham, Henry Moran. And ten minutes gone of extra time and the reigning champions have the lead for the first time today. Aaron Cuthbert, five foot four, left highest and nodded into the bottom corner. Chelsea two, West Ham one. Everton in possession after winning that ball back, cleared away by Decore. And that gives me the perfect opportunity to bring you back in on Decore and just a little shift in formation, Leon. Yeah, defensively we'll still get back in and, and do his role, but he seems to be starting just ever so slightly higher in this second half. More right up front with Dominic Calvert-Lewin, try and be more of a front two. Um, and whether that's a, an, an actual change from, from the manager, Sean Dice, he feels maybe that Calvert-Lewin needs that little bit more help. And it just gives that extra bit of room for Dan Juma, who's just already tried to drift into that pocket of space between... Aston Villa's midfield and defence, and also Harrison in there. All that hullabaloo in the background, you could hear was a bit of confusion over which way a throw was going to go, but in the end it went Everton's way, and Goodison Park was happy with that. They have it on the far side. It was a Nana brought down by Douglas Louise, and belatedly the players do hear the whistle of David Coote. And Everton have the free kick. Jordan Pickford raced <laughs> midway through his own half to take that. Instead, it's Tarkovsky. Good ball out to the left-hand side, headed on by Mikalenko, off Leon Bailey. And that will be another throw to Everton. So still goalless, three and a half minutes played. In this, the most played fixture in English league history. 212th meeting between these sides, all in the top flight, incidentally. Everton have won 76, Aston Villa have won 80, 55 draws. So still goalless here, but Ollie Watkins trying to get in behind, well cleared away by James Tarkovsky, who has made more blocks in the Premier League for the past two seasons running than any other player, and he's top of the charts this season as well, as Aston Villa have it on the halfway line, sent out to the right-hand side. Leon Bailey won't reach it. Eventually, 
That header from Mikalenko will fall to the Aston Villa wide man. Konza has it now, brought down. It's one of these where he grabs the ball before the whistle's blown, but it is a free kick to Aston Villa midway through the Everton half on the right-hand side. Yeah, I used to love this fixture, talking about being the most played. I mean, two clubs with, with really good history, I think two clubs with brilliant fan bases, and two wonderful stadiums as well. A collision of heads between three players just outside the Everton penalty area. And a bit of concern here, Ollie Watkins is down for Villa Tarkovsky as well. Branthwaite is over to check on Mikalenko. And Leon Bailey as well is just sitting up. So play very quickly stopped. Latest in the Women's FA Cup. Sheffield United now 2 0 up. Away to Tottenham. And that would be a shock. And again, Seamus Coleman is gesturing for further treatment here as Leon Bailey is helped to his feet. Tarkovsky sitting up as well, but Mikalenko is still lying on the ground. And I think the biggest concerns are for the Ukrainian international as Tarkovsky is checked over and the medical staff move away. And now all the attention is on Mikalenko. Watkins back up to his feet, Bailey as well. But play still stopped here, Leon Osman. Yeah, I haven't seen the incident back again yet Tarkovsky has already got a cut above his right eye holding the left side of his head on that situation you're right it seems to be a three-way coming together Leon Bailey though is, is back to his feet quick enough but there is real concern for, for Mikalenko who's on his left hand side in what we'd call the recovery position and, um, hasn't really moved from from that moment it does seem to be yeah, we just got a little glimpse there does seem to be a lot of blood on the side maybe the back of the head of of the Ukrainian left back and he's he's a player that, that that his manager won't want to lose they've not really got a natural left-sided left-footed replacement in that area so I'm sure he's hoping and the medical staff are hoping to be able to get back to his feet and be able to resume this game he will have to go through the medical protocols that that everybody does he needs to stay in a head injury rightly so these days but Dice won't want to lose him and you mentioned, Leon, we've not seen a replay yet, and, and it was it nasty. It was nasty in real time, and, and immediately two of the Everton players were gesturing for treatment. And, and when they don't show replays, it's normally because the collision was really not a very nice one indeed. Uh, but thankfully, Mikalenko is back up to his feet. Applause rippling around Goodison Park, and there is, as Leon says, a lot of blood. So it's down his arm as well, where he's kind of laid to cushion his head, but the, the cut is, is clearly on his head, and that is really, really nasty indeed. Yeah, and it's, it's strange as this sounds, the cut isn't the worry. I mean, you can you can bandage up a cut, you can get on, especially the back of your head. It's Is he looking shaky? Is he looking a little bit wobbly on his feet? That's, that's the, the real concern, so I'm sure they'll get him to the side of the pitch and just give him a moment and just make sure... He certainly has his wits about him. Yeah, that is exactly what they've done. He is being bandaged up, Terry Butcher style, on the side of the pitch. And he did look not groggy, shall we say, as he came over, which is really positive as Jack Harrison putting the pressure on Alex Moreno. Clears out of play for a throw to Everton, deep in Aston Villa territory. Still goalless, Mikalenko still off the pitch. Eight minutes gone in this second half. We'll be heading back to Chelsea shortly. Extra time in the Women's FA Cup between Chelsea and West Ham at Kings Meadow. But Everton still keeping up the pressure. Though now they go all the way back to Jordan Pickford. So come in from Kings Meadow, Henry Moran. That should do it for Chelsea. Two goals in the first half of extra time. They now lead by three goals to one against West Ham. And the young substitute, Aggie Beaver Jones, has got it over the goalkeeper's head into the back of the net. Chelsea three, West Ham one. Thank you very much, Henry, and applause all around Goodison Park as Mikalenko, head bandaged, comes back onto the pitch. And we play on with the full complement of both teams here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Manchester United against Tottenham is our 4.30 commentary coming up for you. You can watch all the highlights on Match of the Day 2, 10.30 this evening on BBC Warners. Moreno under pressure, has it over on that left-hand side, midway through the Aston Villa half will bounce out of play for an Everton throw. Aston Villa, remember, who can go level on points with Liverpool at the top of the Premier League with a victory here. Everton with a win, would move three points clear of the relegation zone, still with that appeal to be heard against that ten-point deduction for their alleged breaches of financial fair play as the ball goes out. Oh,
over on the far side for an Everton throw deep in Aston Villa territory. Yeah, good pressure from Everton. Tried to do something with the throw in, lost the ball, but didn't turn back and retreat to the halfway line. Three players putting pressure on two Aston Villa players deep inside that final third in that left quadrant of Aston Villa and winning the ball back and getting a throw in attacking area. So here comes this throw from Everton on the right hand side. Kure will stab it back to Seamus Coleman, but a little bit of a miscommunication and the ball goes out of play for an Aston Villa throw as Ronald Danjuma waits on the edge of the D. It's his first start since mid September, Danjuma. Dwight McNeil is on the bench, came off with an ankle injury in their last match against Crystal Palace. Looked pretty serious at the time, but has recovered to make the squad. But rare opportunity for Danjuma to impress. He has it now as Everton win back possession, plays it to Calvert Lewin, edge of the area. Calvert Lewin can't stab it through to Decore. It was a good ball by Danjuma, though. Brantho wins the header as Villa looks to counter. Good challenge by Garner, fouled by DRB. Now, there was a shout from the fans, certainly, about a possible flailing elbow there from Musa Diaby. David Coote is giving himself a bit of time to think. The free kick has gone ever since way. But just going back to Dan Juma, Leon Osman, I mean, it's a lot of speculation at the moment about his future. He's on loan for Villarreal. His agent has said publicly that there have been conversations with Leon about potentially leaving this January. Sean Dyke's played down talk of a move in his press conference. He's never been out of our plans, he said. But... How do you see Dan Juma and does he really fit into Sean Dyche's plans? Um, well, Everton and, and Sean Dyche won't want to lose him because sheer size of squad, they need they need players and they need bodies, but there's no doubt he hasn't done what Everton would have brought him in to do, hit the ground, run and create other chances, score goals. So he's not been he, he's not been the lone move that, that Everton wanted and that Sean Dyche was hoping to get out of a player. So I can understand why he has been linked with moves elsewhere, but just by numbers alone, Everton can't really afford to see him go. Two poor balls over the top, see a bit of action for Emmy Martinez and Jordan Pickford respectively, and we're still nil-nil. 11 minutes gone, this second half yet to spark into life, really. Of course, not helped by that heading to Rita Mikalenko, who is back on the pitch and in the centre circle as Everton in possession. Have it with Harrison over on that wide right-hand side. Starting past the challengers and playing it to Seamus Coleman. Longley does really well there, not just to make the interception, but to play it to Moreno. And he plays it out to the left-hand side and Douglas Louise. Longley will clear now up towards the halfway line, well anticipated by Branthwaite, but picked up by Bubakar Kamara. Has a little bit of space through the centre. Almost a brilliant ball to Musa Diaby. Branthwaite just does enough to hold him up, but Diaby finds Watkins just outside the area. Deflection is behind, and Jordan Pickford comes out and roars at James Garner. Positively, I think, because it was Garner who got the deflection on that effort. And the ball goes out of play for a Villa corner. You know, Pickford's one of those. He's a bit like Sean Dyche. You never quite know. <laughs> <laughs> he's always roaring. Yeah. Is it positive? Is it negative? Who knows? Yeah, he came out as if he was going to have a right go at somebody. And then it turned to be applause. And, and rightly so. James Garner covered probably 60 yards at full sprint to get back and put that block in on the edge of his own penalty area. And that's how quickly, yes, Aston Villa are very good with McGinn and Diaby in position when they're in possession of the ball and getting Watkins away but they're also good on the counter-attack Aston Villa as they showed there it's unlucky they didn't get the finish and they play the corner short again whipped in to the edge of the six-yard box headed away powerfully by Amadou Anana and out to this left-hand side and to Kure who plays it forward over the halfway line Garner underneath it but can't get there ahead of Musa Diaby who is out of play for an Everton throw finally poised this one yeah as quite often happens at the start of the second half those defensive changes take over before any of the the attacking changes that they may have made managers at half time because you know you see so many off times how many sec first halves have been bubbling along nicely or, or going really well and then changes at half time from managers to shore things up and then these players have got to find out again at the start of this second half how to break their opposition down. Really nice play by Everton down the right-hand side. Coleman's delivery into the area, headed away by Esri Konsa, comes to Anana. Edge of the penalty area, miscontrol allows Douglas Luiz to take it off his toes. And John McGinn will play it forward for Aston Villa. 13 and a half minutes gone in this second half. We're still goalless as Villa sweep forward. Douglas Luiz up against James Tarkovsky, his counterpart number six. And Tarkovsky gets the foot in and here goes Harrison, racing away from... Bubakar Kamara, who does get back well enough to try and put him off, so Harrison stops and checks and sends the ball back to Ducouré. 
Oh, enough blue shirts forward for Everton. Goodison Park thinks maybe not as Mikalenko plays it to Decore. Tried the chip pass out to the left hand side and Dunjuma. It was poor. And Villa get the foot in. Lovely turn from Watkins away from Branthwaite and he skipped away from Garner as well. Branthwaite trying to get back. Watkins plays it to McGinn. And now Leon Bailey and Everton are stretched here and Villa are coming forward with purpose. Musa Diaby all oh, could have gone down there. Belatedly did. Leon Bailey picks it up again. Diaby still down inside the area. John McGinn tries the curl and it's just wide and now the Villa players surround referee David Coot I think McGinn thinks Pickford might have got a touch I think Diaby thinks he might have had a penalty yeah that's the Villa won a penalty it was a, a good tackle from Tarkovsky on Diaby but it was one of them that in the modern game was it too physical he won the ball clearly but he clattered into Diaby once he makes the, the, uh, the tackle Mikalenko may have got a nick on Diaby Tarkovsky wins the ball and leaves a right bit in on Diaby from the angle it's an old school defender's tackle give me an opportunity to win the ball and take the man I'm doing both and in the modern game you don't always get away with them Tarkovsky has there because the game has commenced yeah we're underway once more that is interesting because I think there's two incidents there and we'll talk about them in a second because Everton are coming forward with Jack Harrison into the penalty area right hand side might come through to Dunjuma tried to steer it in got a little deflection on the way through as it came to him and it just put him off he can't steer it into that bottom corner and it's behind for an Aston Villa goal kick and it's still nil-nil but the game is coming to life Leon Osman yeah, he's got to do better there Hey, Dan Juma. I mean, the ball has come through, and yes, it has bobbled, and yes, there is a bit of pressure from Konza as he comes out, but he looked like he was worried about the pressure. He looked like he was a bit scared of getting clattered in making connection with the ball. He needed to just go through, get a good connection, get a shot on target, and take whatever was coming his way. Game really opening up. Douglas Louise comes down this right-hand side. Beto preparing to come on for Everton, but Leon Bailey has it for Aston Villa, right-hand side of the area. Here's Konza joining the attack group, blocked by Mikalenko behind for a Villa corner brilliant from Michalenko for a moment there he was 2v1 and Juma was trying to get back you've got Leon Bailey trying to cut inside onto that left foot as a fullback do you gamble because you can't allow Leon Bailey on that left foot to come inside and, and get a shot away from that position but he timed his, his spin off to follow the run of Konza brilliantly and then blocked that cross coming into the penalty here gave away a corner it's going to be a double change for Everton. Dwight McNeil also preparing to come on along with Beto. And again, Villa take the corner short from the right-hand side this time. Leon Bailey. As Douglas Louise there with him. Slides it through to Kamara instead. Pulled back by Diaby. And Pickford is right behind it. This is in to end. I want to bring you in on those two penalty appeals. And let's do so because Pickford has just delayed bowling that ball out. The Mikalenko touch possibly could have gone down there couldn't he Diaby and then as you say Tarkovsky gets the ball but it's a crunching follow through as Danjuma chests it down just outside the area played back by Bailey offside flag is up anyway on the far side it's going to be a double change for Aston Villa as well but just wonder if, again we're talking about VAR whether they could have taken a little bit more time because there were two incidents to look at there. well this brings you back to the argument of a player going down in, in situations because Di uh, Diaby didn't go down with a slight touch from Mikalenko. He tried to carry on and then got clattered fairly unfairly. I mean, certainly won the ball by Tarkovsky, but then he got clattered by Tarkovsky. It's very similar to, you know, I would say the touch of Bruno Fernandez away at Wigan you know, the, the other night that there was a slight touch on him. If he goes down, the, the, uh, the officials have got a decision to make. He tries to stay on his feet and um, don't get a decision. So that double change, firstly for Everton, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Anand Dunjuma being replaced by Beto and McNeil. John Duran is on for Leon Bailey. And Moussa Tiarbi, who does not look happy about this at all, is on for Yuri Tillemans returning from injury. Well, I think he's also not happy about that penalty appeal he felt he should have had. Just on Calvert-Lewin, I was really interested by what you said in the first half, Leon, about the sense in the stadium when he had that one-on-one -on -one with Emi Martinez and that feeling of a lack of confidence in the moment as a player. Does that transmit to you? Are you aware of the nervousness of the crowd almost when you're bearing down one-on-one -on -one and you know that you haven't been in the best form? Well, you can't hear individual voices, but when you have that much time and you're going through on goal, you can, you can hear a sense from the crowd in, in that situation so you know that chance in the first half you can you could certainly I, I think he would have heard the noises as he's gone through on goal but you have to shut them out you're a professional at the top level of your game
Here come Aston Villa. Can Everton shut them out here? Ball in from the left-hand side. Cleared away by Jared Branthwaite. And will bounce out for a throw right in front of those travelling Aston Villa supporters deep in Everton territory, which Alex Moreno prepares to take. Interesting changes from, from both sides, as you've just said, taking off Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, is a big call, bringing on Beto. I think the McNeil one was was more simple for uh, for the manager to have made. You know, McNeil has been playing really well. Dan Juma again, another game slipped by without him having any real effect. And from an Aston Villa point of view, you've took off your two, probably two of your, your, your most influential players with regards to getting in pockets and spaces in Diaby and, and Bailey and running with the ball. And you've brought in an extra midfielder and brought on another strike and they will go two up top. Here goes Tillemans, Duran picks it up, ball across his ball, Watkins is waiting, it's straight behind from the substitute. He scored pretty much immediately in the 4-0 victory against Everton at Villa Park earlier this season after coming off the bench, but there he was looking to turn provider, poor delivery behind for an Everton goal kick. No, but good positive signs for, for Aston Villa there because you know, Tillemans has gone on the left side of a 4-4-2, McGinn has now come over to the right side, they've gone two up, but the wide men are no longer the RB and Bailey players that are going to opposite out, uh, operate out wide and run out wide they're going to come into that middle they're going to give opportunities on the run for those two strikers in, in Watkins and Durani will peel in those spaces in between Everton's centre-backs and, and Everton's full-backs either side those will be the spaces and immediately the two subs combined and they're nearly getting Duran in former England and Everton midfielder Leon Osman here with us on Five Live and BBC Sounds at Goodison Park this afternoon as Coleman gives the ball away straight to Wally Watkins and Aston Villa are coming forward brilliant sliding challenge by Brantwaite dispossesses Sean McGinn and Kamara can't retain possession Garner did well there and here goes Dwight McNeil down the left hand side still looking for the breakthrough as McNeil sends the ball in it's over the head of everybody including Beto his fellow substitute and behind for an Aston Villa goal kick our next commentary this afternoon comes from Old Trafford, Manchester United against Tottenham and John Murray has the team news. Well, Christian Eriksen's return against his former club is Manchester United's only change from their FA Cup team. McTominay is on the bench, as is the returning Casemiro, but neither Shaw nor Maguire are involved at all again yet. For Tottenham, a big blow. There's no Kulosevsky, who is absent ill. However, there's a debut for Timo Werner straight into the team, but their other arrival this week, Rado Dragosin, is a substitute that's because Romero and Van de Ven are back together in central defence and with Lo Celso injured, like Ben Davis, Hoybier comes into the midfield. Thank you, John. Full commentary coming up with John and Clinton Morrison from 4.30 as Longley sends the ball back to Emmy Martinez and we have another head injury here. So referee David Cooter's stop play. Sassan Villa have the ball over on the far side. It is Bubakar Kamara who's down and David Cooter just making sure... That he is OK. Latest in the Women's FA Cup, Bethany England has scored for Tottenham. They've got to go back against Sheffield United, looking to avoid an upset there. And Leicester have taken the lead at Derby. They are ahead by a goal to nil. Kamara back up to his feet. And David Coutts will allow Emmy Martinez to get things underway once more. But goalless still, it remains at Goodison Park midway through this second half. And Aston Villa at the moment squandering the chance to go level on points with Liverpool at the top of the table. Mr. Corey plays it forward, looking for Beto, might break to Garner, good challenge by Kamara. Nice footwork as well, just to keep possession. He's done brilliantly there, Kamara, to play it to John McGinn and evade the challenges of the Everton players that were surrounding him as the ball goes back to Diego Carlos. But Unai Emery animated on the touchline. Aston Villa have only failed to score in two of their 30 games in all competitions this season. That was against Liverpool. And Nottingham Forest, and they're being held here on Merseyside by Everton. 0-0 on 5 Live and BBC Sounds as Carlos plays it forward. Nice little flip by Tielemans to Douglas Louise. And Nana's gone down off the ball. David Coutts thinking about stopping play and now does with Aston Villa in possession. The Villa fans on the far side are furious. It's just getting a little bit niggly, Leon Osman. Yeah, it's become a very stop-start. And, you know, anytime somebody feels like they're getting a little bit of momentum, does somebody go down or a head injury? I mean, the ball hit Kamara on the head there. We stopped the game. The ball is... I'm not even sure what's just happened to Onana, but he fell on the floor right in front of the referee and everybody just seemed to stop. As the Villa then went to carry on, the referees thought, I'll just stop the game. And, and that's the way the, the second half's, the half's gone. It's been very disjointed. Neither team's really been able to get up any real momentum in the game 
just seeing this again. Still an unsure. I mean, he, he had a coming together with Tillemans. He was the one trying to tackle Tillemans there, oh no. And I'm not quite sure what he's done. He's back on his feet now, but uh, he doesn't seem pleased. And we play on. Aston Villa in possession. Long lace ball over the top, headed away by James Tarkovsky out to the right hand side. And Harrison Coleman will send it forward. Beto gets on it but plays it straight out of play for an Aston Villa throw. Unai Emery stands, arms folded on the edge of his technical area. And that is it. There is so much expectation on Aston Villa. They've been mentioned in so many conversations. European Champions League, whisper it quietly, title challenges, but having come off the back of a record-breaking 2023, they needed a late goal to get past Middlesbrough of the Championship in the FA Cup. And they're being held here by Everton at Goodison Park. Nil-nil as Everton win a free kick inside the centre circle. Leon Osman. The thing about Aston Villa, though, is they've developed a, a, a pretty good squad of players they're not just an 11 at the moment that Unai Emery is, Emery is working with he's got himself a, a deep squad and there's a few injuries there's a few absentees and they're still able to bring on quality players like Tillemans who can't get a start regular and it shows where Aston Villa are and how they develop and how they beat teams like Middlesbrough late on how they score so many late goals can either side find the breakthrough here Tarkovsky with the header from that set piece Douglas Luiz inadvertently heads it back towards Tarkovsky on the edge of the area tossing with Diego Carlos the Everton fans baying for a foul oh Tarkovsky's gone flying in there right in front of the assistant on the far side he says that's an Aston Villa throw David Coote is having to go over because it's all boiling over there now no foul was initially given there's a lot of pushing and shoving he was cross Tarkovsky that he didn't get the initial decision now it's turned into a bit of argy-bargy. The decision made initially was throw to Aston Villa. No foul by Tarkovsky, but he did go in strongly there, Leon Osman. It's right the other side of the pitch from us, but it's one of those where you think, oof. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. It was a no pass taken. No, uh, no thought of... It was pretty similar to the, to the tackle he made for the, for the potential penalty kick we were talking about earlier that you know he certainly wins the ball he certainly has a great connection with the ball but he does end up clattering Alex Moreno old school you know I was on the end of a good few of them in my time and players I played with Tony Hibbert used to just laugh at me because it was my fault I'd turned into the uh, the defender I'd given them an opportunity to foul or, or tackle me in that way now it seemed a little bit an outlawed that you can't make any contact with the opposite number as you're um, as you're making a tackle, it was certainly aggressive, it was certainly more aggression than that tackle in the very corner needed. But the referee didn't give any kind of decision, that's the thing, Tarkovsky turned and ran away and it was only the reaction of the Aston Villa players that has warranted the, the, the coming together and the yellow cards that have now been given out. So he's been, this, is, this is interesting because Tarkovsky has been booked, Villa have seen a player go into the book there as well, long lay. And James Tarkovsky is saying exactly what you just said, Leon. Look, it's a throw. A throw was given, so what are you booking me for? Now, there was Argy Bardi afterwards, but I'm not sure how involved Tarkovsky necessarily was in that. Here's the challenge we see a replay. I mean, it's strong on Moreno. Yes, he gets the ball, but the throw is given. Let's see how they restart here, because if they restart with the throw, what exactly is David Koo? seen in the aftermath that he's worthy of it because you can't put yeah, Tarkovsky I mean, for the tackle and not give a free kick to Aston Tar Villa Tarkovsky walked away from it he didn't raise an arm Tillemans was the first one to start pushing people then Longley came over and started then other Everton players came in to start protecting the Tarkovsky was the one player that didn't raise his arms in, in any way or didn't go head to head with anyone in any way so quite what he's been booked for I'm unsure because it looks like they are going to start the game well, after this substitution has been made, they are going to start the game with a throw in, which, yeah, again, I, I'm, I'm confused. You and me both, Leon, to be honest. We've not seen anything in that other than the challenge that could warrant a yellow card. And if they restart with the throw, then can't be for the challenge. So in and amongst all that, Diego Carlos has come off. Matty Cash has come on. He got the winner late on for Aston Villa against Middlesbrough last weekend in the FA Cup. So let's see. Well, he's going to be... Um, Honestly, honestly, listeners, we are nonplussed because unless David Coote has seen something in there, and, and that's it, if you're going to book Tarkovsky for his part in that, you might as well book about six players because 
certainly he was not the greatest defender in that. So it's a throw to Aston Villa. Yellow cards for Longley and Tarkovsky apiece. Tarkovsky not happy about that, but sensibly then did move away and allow Seamus Coleman to complain as Everton pick it up. Garner inside the area, well dispossessed. Douglas Louise will pick it up for Aston Villa. Tielemans has lost it though. Garner has it down the right hand side. Goodison Park playing. They feel a sense of injustice as Coleman goes down and the free kick is belatedly given. Garner went down initially. Coleman is moving away from Yuri Tillemans, who's been booked for his part in that. Oh, it's all kicking off, Leon Osman. Yeah, it's turned a bit fiery, hasn't it? Which I actually think will help Everton more than it'll help Aston Villa. The crowd are very much involved. It's given Everton a bit more fire to go and chase the ball and win these tackles. Yuri Tillemans still, I think, a bit frustrated from the previous incident. You could see that in the manner in which he tried to win the ball back. I think as well, which I'm just seeing, haven't seen the replay, Seamus Coleman barged him off the ball and then they just jumped back up and then charged at James Garner and brought him to the ground and quite often the referees see the way you run towards the ball as your intent and he's received the yellow card although the tackle wasn't the worst. So free kick to Everton, swung into the six-yard box, great take by Emi Martinez under real pressure on the edge of his six-yard box. He comes, raises two arms and claims that ball full-time at Kings Meadow, Henry Moran. And Chelsea 3, West Ham 1. The cup holders from the last three seasons are through. Despite a scare from the Hammers, it took a second-half equaliser. Two goals in extra time for Chelsea women to get the job done, but they deserve the win. Chelsea 3, West Ham haven't won a game since early October. Chelsea 3, West Ham 1. And Tottenham looking to avoid an upset as well in the Women's FA Cup. They have equalised against Sheffield United from 2-0 down to 2-2. Two goals for the England international, Bethany Englanders. Bubakar Kamara has it for Aston Villa. All of a sudden, the second half has flown by the last 10 minutes. We've got 14 minutes plus that of time to play. Keep your eye on your watch, Leon. See if you'll make your train. <laughs> but it's a good game that it's developing into still nil nil still so finely poised and still a little bit feisty as Matty Cash brings it down this right hand side pulls the ball in field to Bubakar Kamara now Douglas Louise closed down by Beto so goes back to Esri Konsu plays it forward to Louise once more and Konsu now in the centre circle will square it to Longley and out to the left hand side and now here comes Moreno groaned at the space that he has as Duran flicks it on Branthwaite away but not quite Duran wants more into the arms of Pickford that was good battling there by Duran he, he made it very difficult for Tarkovsky to win the second header and he won the, uh, the first header he won the second one brilliantly but not enough on it to beat Jordan Pickford but good move from Villa good ball out by Pickford as well but Kamara gets there ahead of Dwight McNeil wasn't moving that quickly there. You just wonder just how fit McNeil is after coming off with that ankle injury against Crystal Palace that at the time was feared it might keep him out for a significant period. He is fit, certainly enough to play some minutes as a substitute as Dean Sean Deitch. As Aston Villa in possession once more with Esri Constant. Aston Villa at the moment. He will be moving level on points with Manchester City, but still behind them on goal difference as the free kick is given the way of Aston Villa, just outside the centre circle, Leon Osman. He's been so sharp for that today, Ollie Watkins, that Tarkovsky's got to be careful there, coming into the space, bringing him down. Watkins has come and dropped and just allowed the ball to run across his body, took it on the back foot to both Everton centre-halves now. Kamara's ball into the area. Ooh, was there a little push there on John Duran? The Villa fans were shouting for it. Duran didn't really appeal. I think he might have done. As Matty Cash picks it back up just outside the penalty area. Aston Villa keeping up the pressure. Here is John McGinn just ahead of Kamara. Comes to Louise. Lovely bit of footwork. Stabs it out to Matty Cash. Can't control cleanly, but does retain possession out on this right hand side. Nil nil on five live and BBC Sounds at Goodison Park with 12 minutes plus out of time to play. Cash in field to Douglas Louise. Eases away from Dwight McNeil. Gets the ball across. Punched away by Pickford out of the penalty area. And Decore wins the header. Beto dispossessed by Consa Cash gets the foot in. John McGinn, Douglas Louise dinks it into the penalty area. John Duran has it now, forced out of the box. It's good defending by Mikalenko. And in the end, Aston Villa win the throw. John Duran wanted a little bit more than that. But it is just the throw to Villa. Everton on the back foot. Yeah, he's been very much involved. Duran, he's been a right handful to those to Everton centre-half, so you've already had to deal with Ollie Watkins for the majority, but I don't know if you heard the groan about 10-15 seconds ago, because good crossing from this right-hand side for Villa, but Pickford decided to punch rather than catch and relieve the pressure, 
That's why Everton is still defending. They have managed to clear up towards halfway, but Conza is there. Beto trying to close off the angle to Martinez, but can't do so. And Emi Martinez has it. At what point, if you're Sean Dyche and Everton, do you think this is not a bad point, really? Probably about 10 minutes ago, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest. I think, ultimately, I think both teams would be OK with a point, but there is an opportunity for both teams to win it as well. Tillemans whips the ball in, it's headed away by Branthwaite on the edge of the six-yard box, down into the ground. Coleman will pick it up on the right-hand side, and here goes Anana. Bit of space, still midway through his own half. Surely Decore's offside there. Flag stays down for now, so Decore might as well run it. Goodison Park not expecting. Decore still going inside the penalty area as well, blocks away. Still we play on, still the flag stays down. Well, Villa have won it anyway. The referee, David Coote, did gesture for an offside, and Villa in possession will try and bring the ball away with Duran. Out to the left-hand side and Alex Moreno, who's had a good game for them, looked really dangerous coming forward down that left-hand side. Pulls it back to Tielemans as Villa just slow the play down. Nil-nil, 10 minutes plus out of time to play. Villa drawing a blank for only the third time this season. 31 games in all competitions, unless they can find the late breakthrough as the away fans once again raise their voice on the far side of the ground as Douglas Louise plays the ball forward, it's poor, and Pickford can claim. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, we're now at that stage where I think both teams are, are going forward with belief they can score, both teams are going forward with the desire to score, but they're not overexerting themselves, the fullbacks aren't necessarily getting as far forward in, in the attack as they once were. <laughs> this is needless. I mean, it is boiling over at certain times, isn't it? That one's diffused itself but Onana and Douglas Louise tangling with each other it looked to me as though Onana was trying to almost get himself in a headlock by Douglas Louise and then complain you know that ages ago that Charlie bit my finger video on YouTube where the little boy his brother puts his little brother's finger in his mouth he's always oh, biting me and it's actually the older brother that's doing it all along reminded me of that <laughs> but referee David Coote allows it just to simmer down Aston Villa have a free kick for an offside but you know it's one of these we've had a few yellow cards Leon Osman it's got a bit fractious in this second half at either end of the table both sides very much needing to pursue points I have a feeling it might ball over again before we reach full time yeah definitely especially if there's a goal in the game I think uh, if there is a team to lose this there'll be a lot of bad feeling uh, at the end, there'll be a lot of frustration that will definitely boil over. We'll see tackles, we'll see even more that, that start to happen within the game. Villa could have had a free kick there, but Douglas Luiz plays it forward and then spreads his arms, and he and John Duran are having a right row with each other. As he comes to, come to Douglas Luiz and pushes him and says, you know, come on, get on with it. That's exactly what Everton are doing. Anana's ball looking for Harrison, headed away by Moreno. Here is Tillemans. Turns up towards halfway and cuts it back to Moreno. Can Everton fashion another chance? They've taken off Dominic Calvert Lewin, who's missed the best one of the game. One on one with Emmy Martinez. Martinez standing tall and making the save when really Calvert Lewin in form would have given him no chance. Branfake clears away for Everton, but Villa it is who are continuing to mount pressure and mount attacks as they drive towards that Everton penalty area once again. Douglas Louise to Ollie Watkins. Cash is on the move down the right hand side. Watkins instead finds Louise once more. Watkins then plays plays it behind Cash, ball goes out of play, it's an Everton throw and, and we have to say at times Leon Osman that has too often been the story, just a lack of quality with that key pass. Yeah, a couple of times that players have got into really good decision, uh, really good positions and their decision making has been a bit awful, they played it behind a teammate and they've just had to slow down and actually there Ollie Watkins just kicking the ball out of the pitch but I still feel there might be a goal in this game. I think both teams are, are, are desperate for it. Both teams are searching. Here goes John McGinn down the right-hand side. Commentary of Manchester United against Tottenham coming up from 4.30 on 5 Live with John Murray and Clinton Morrison. And then you can have your say on all the weekend's football action with Robbie and Chris on 6.06 following that commentary. Here come Villa down the left-hand side again. Moreno's delivery is poor. Sails over the head of everybody and he's behind for an Everton goal kick now what's going on off the ball John Duran took a tumble Mikalenko then bumps into him David Coots across quickly <laughs> you never know where a flashpoint is going to blow up do you <laughs> it's been good from that sense it's certainly been a good game even though it's nil-nil there's been so much going on and there's been so much with VARs and tackles and 
happenings off the ball, head injuries. There's the, it's, it, it has been non-stop and the game has flown by from our point of view, but we are just lacking that goal. We're, we're missing that real moment where the game just really bursts into life. Well, Villa have had a penchant for late goals this season under Unai Emery. And they find one here, well, Everton and Beto, who hasn't really had a chance since coming on, get an opportunity at the other end. At the moment, the pattern is Villa dominating possession, dominating momentum, as once again they cross the halfway line. Everton trying to hold them at bay. Nil-nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Mikalenko gets his bandaged head there first, out of play. For a throw to Aston Villa, which Matty Cash takes quickly. Kamara will pick it up midway through the Everton half. Nil-nil at Goodison Park here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Longley will bring it forward for Aston Villa. Everton very much in the defensive shape now as Longley digs it forward, looking for the run of Moreno. He's done really well to keep that in. Watkins at a layoff. Cash, brilliant block by Mikalenko, stabs it away. Everton trying to clear, McGinn trying to place it and somehow Coleman clears it out of the penalty area. What an almighty scramble. Villa come again. John McGinn, Watkins thought there was a handball in there. Mikalenko picks up position and should be able to clear, but had Watkins been able to let fly there, I'm sure it would have been disallowed. Dwight McNeil has it on the left-hand side for Everton. It's still not quite clear yet, this dangerous. Mikalenko goes back to Pickford, takes a touch, closed down by Watkins. Pickford then goes for safety first as Sean Dyche waves his players up the pitch. Beto down, dispossessed. They're all appealing for it. Both managers are. Throw goes the way of Aston Villa. How on earth did Everton not concede there, Leon Osman? Oh, because of... Mikalenko, there's absolutely no doubt. I mean, I was just thinking before, you know, thinking about this game and there's not been goals. There hasn't actually been that real moment of quality uh, offensively. I was thinking, who's probably played as well as they possibly can for their position? And I was thinking about Mikalenko. He's got his head injury, he's got his bandage, he's getting on with his job, he's played well. Bailey's gone up. Well, that secured it. That was outstanding defending. It just seemed that it had to be a goal. Seemed like everything stopped and everything opened up for Matty Cash just to roll it in from eight yards out, centre of goal. Suddenly from nowhere, Mikalenko appeared and made an absolutely outstanding tackle. Super, super defending. Cash was in so much space. Could he have made it harder for Mikalenko? That's what will be in his mind. John McGinn was down, so Villa have just knocked it around until he's got back up, which he has done now. They're in possession, Aston Villa, midway through their own half. Wolves have scored at Reading in the Women's FA Cup. They now lead by two goals to one. As Kamara sends it all the way back to Emmy Martinez. Three and a half minutes, plus added time to play here at Goodison Park on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Out to the left-hand side goes Martinez. Longley will bring it forward again, picks a nice pass. He's done that well this afternoon out of defence. That time finding Watkins, he now finds Matty Cash. Right-hand side, whips the ball into the area and it's flicked just past the post by the incoming John Duran on the angle. It would have been an outstanding finish, but it fizzes just past that far post of Pickford and Everton survive. It's still nil-nil. Well, he's looking to the skies and he's screaming out loud. Duran, he can't believe that that touch of his hasn't found the back of the goal and I think everybody in the stadium actually thought it did. It was a brilliant move. Ollie Watkins again taking the ball off his back foot across his body, playing it out wide to Cash, who delivers a wonderful ball in. Branthwaite just probably for the first time this season got his positioning wrong. But Decore could be in behind here for Everton. The flag stays down. Decore into the area! The flag is up on the far side as Decore smashes the ball into the net. And now, not for the first time this afternoon, we wait for VAR. Yeah, we wait for VAR, but my initial reaction that he was he was offside. I think he tried to bend his run, but I think he did it already from an offside position. I think I think the player on the far side is Moreno. I think he was in control of the situation. I think he could see, he made sure he didn't drop back too quickly. So they played Decore onside. He does well once he gets in there. Decore takes it onto his left foot, fires it to the near post of, uh, of Emi Martinez, beats the goalkeeper, good finish, but my initial reaction was that he was offside. So whilst we wait for VAR to confirm that goal is ruled out, Aston Villa have made another change, John McGinn is off. And Nicolo Zaniolo is on McGinn, who had just picked up a knock, and indeed it is offside, we're back underway. No goal for Abdullah Dekore, no goal for Everton. So both sides with a goal this match. Ward out for offside. The throw goes the way of Aston Villa. Mikalenko absolutely.
absolutely fuming, but Aston Villa have got things underway midway through the Everton half, and now the throw goes the way of Everton. Mikelenko has to be careful here. He's barking at the assistant on this near side. David Coote's going to let it go, but we know they're clamping down on descent. He's just got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, he does. He was too frustrated there, if, if you possibly can be, but the person who couldn't see that was an Everton throw in there was the assistant. He was closest. So the, you could hear the Evertonians' reaction. Mikalenko wasn't pleased either. I was talking about that chance for Duran when, when Decore went through. And he's got across Tarkovsky brilliantly and he's just got a faintest of touches on it, guided it to the far post. You thought for all the world it was going to find its way into the back of that Everton goal, but Pickford watched it just go past that far post was with, uh, with desperation on his face. So Matty Cash in possession just inside the Villa half. How many minutes do you need to make your train, Leon Osman? Because oh. we're heading for out of time. Well, I can't <laughs> run, so uh, probably about 25. <laughs> I think you might be struggling. Because we are heading for seven minutes of out of time at the end of this match. Seven minutes for either Everton or Aston Villa to find a goal. Seven minutes for Everton to lift themselves three points clear of the relegation zone with a win. Seven minutes for Aston Villa to move level on points with Liverpool at the top of the Premier League with a victory. At the moment, the spoils are being shared, but it's Villa who are in the ascendancy in terms of possession, in terms of territory outside the Everton penalty area. Although, as we've just seen with Decore, an offside flag away from hitting them on the counter and finding that breakthrough. It's Villa with the throw over on the far side. Full commentary of Manchester United against Tottenham coming up from Old Trafford after this 4.30 kick-off as Aston Villa have it with Moreno. Over on the far side, well pressured by Everton, but Douglas Luiz will send it forward, cleared away by Garner, and now Everton will try and run it forwards. Dispossessed, though, and Aston Villa have it with Longley. He will steer it all the way back to Emmy Martinez but applause around Goodison Park shows you that the home side here once again appreciative of the effort that their side have put in and you get the sense that the fans wouldn't feel this is a bad point either as Aston Villa win a free kick just midway inside their own half nil nil concert over this for Unai Emery's side he's down on the edge of his technical area can they find another late goal as they have done on several occasions this season, Aston Villa? As Consa has it just outside the centre circle. Tottenham have come from 2-0 down in the Women's FA Cup to lead Sheffield United by three goals to two. And London City Lioness is a 1-0 up against Moneyfields. As that little ricochet carries all the way through to Emmy Martinez. They just can't get any momentum going at the moment, Everton. But is this now, as we said, about just seeing out this point? From from this moment, yeah, I think that you know at the moment you've you've got a point. Don't throw it away. Don't leave yourself exposed. Yes, if there's an opportunity for your strikers to go and chase down and and get three points out of uh, out of nowhere, go and get it. But you know, don't give anything stupid away. You don't leave people unmarked in in big spaces on the pitch. Aston Villa are still probing. Aston Villa are still moving the ball around. Yeah, I think probing's the right word because you know we talk about Everton taking this point. Villa certainly looking for all three, but there's not quite the urgency that you would expect, for example, if they went behind. Certainly a point is not nothing as they clear away. Mikalenko for Everton over the head of Sean Dyche and Unai Emery is out there wagging his finger. He's straying just in front of Sean Dyche's technical area as Everton pick it up with Dwight McNeil. Under pressure, fires it into Matty Cash. He sends the ball into the penalty area. Flicked away before it can reach Tillemans. Watkins will keep it alive. Here is Tillemans, edge of the box. Forced away from the penalty area. Slides it back into Watkins. Lays it out to Moreno on the left-hand side. Ball is dinked in. Duran is there with the header just past the post. Pickford had it covered. Everton goal kick nil-nil. Well, he's been a threat, no doubt about it. Duran since he's joined the field. Aston Villa have found it probably easier to get the ball wide and put crosses in than they have to thread those passes through the Everton defence today. I think Everton have been happy to give up space in the wide areas and Moreno just leaves the ball. It makes it difficult for Duran. He puts it behind the striker. He has to move away from goal to actually get his head on it, just can't quite get it on target. Everton's turn to play out from the back and play themselves into a bit of trouble, but Kamara 
can't retain possession for Aston Villa and Dwight McNeil sends it out to the right hand side good ball chisser down by Harrison and suddenly the blue shirts are streaming forward Harrison's ball into the area long lay on the stretch won't fall to Beto Conza should tidy up he's fouled by Beto and that will be a free kick to Aston Villa inside their own penalty area late equaliser for Burnley in the Women's FA Cup 1-1 against Birmingham so that is heading to extra time coming up at 4.30 we will be live from Old Trafford. Manchester United against Tottenham with John Murray and Clinton Morrison here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Martinez clears up towards the halfway line. Four minutes of the minimum seven have been played. We're still goalless at Goodison Park as Branthwaite gets a touch on that ball over the top but can only feed Zaniolo. Down the right-hand side he goes, up against Mikalenko. Edge of the penalty area, Zaniolo, McNeil there as well. Mikalenko with the block, Miller with the corner. Yeah, as there's another coming together. Watkins and Tarkovsky in the middle of the pitch and the referees actually give a free kick to Everton despite it being off the ball and Aston Villa having won a quarter kick not quite sure exactly what happened but Tarkovsky was rolling around the floor I think Watkins had all of his foot at one point and it's been that kind of game hasn't it where there's been lots of comings together you can see I think Tarkovsky has to shoulder, shoulder barge as Watkins and Watkins grabs hold of him throws him to the floor and the referee probably only saw the latter part of that gave Everton the, the free kick but it's been that kind of game there's been a lot of comings together a lot of uh, frustration it's as if the players don't actually like each other at all they wanted to get one up and every single challenge shoulder bar just tackles the lot and it's probably took away from the quality that they have on the ball England manager Gareth Southgate just making his way past us through the director's box might miss a late goal Gareth and probably switch five live on straight away to make sure he doesn't it's Dwight McNeil has a throw deep for Everton Inside the Villa half, down by that corner flag, McNeil still has it to Mikalenko, a little bit of space, pulls it to the edge of the area, and Anna clips the ball in, it's poor, it's easy for Emi Martinez, who gets things going, we've got just over one minute of added time to play, John Duran's pulled up there, as he ran through the centre, he stayed down John Duran, as Pickford has the ball just outside his own penalty area, getting back up to his feet, oh, I thought maybe he'd done his hamstring there, but he's getting up to his feet Duran he's not moving well and now he's gone down again but he's holding his ankle and his right boot at the moment John Duran but Everton are coming forward as Garner has the opportunity to play it into the area cleared away by Aston Villa out to the left hand side once again John Duran still down McNeil sends it back in Bubakar Kamara little one two by Villa inside their own penalty area then Kamara went down no foul given Anana drives over from the edge of the box Everton could have kept their heads there because Kamara was down, no free kick given. Anana perhaps could have set himself, could have found a teammate, but he drives over, the chance is gone. Yeah, where do I start? Do I start with the fact, yeah, I thought the way um, Duran pulled up, it looked like he pulled his hamstring, it looked like a bad one, but it's his ankle that he's holding and he's only just trying to get back to his feet from an Everton point of view. Finally, a midfield runner to break the offside trap. A runner from deep, not just the, the first run in behind, one from, from, a, from a deeper position. Garner gets in, fires it across. Everton have got bodies in there again. You think there's going to be an Everton player in the end of it, but again, just like in the first half, just like Everton have done with Mikalenko, the left-back comes from a really deep position to make sure he's the person that gets on the ball. Brilliant defending from the Aston Villa fullback. We played the seven minutes of added time. I think both Everton and Villa players were a bit frustrated with Emi Martinez replacing this goal kick because there are seconds left to play. And those seconds are gone. Referee David Coop blows his whistle and for only the third time this season, Aston Villa failed to score in a match. They missed the chance to go level on points at the top of the Premier League with Liverpool. Everton move a point clear of the relegation zone. Nil-nil, it finishes. Leon Osman. Yeah, I think ultimately uh, a point that both teams will take. I don't think either team really did enough to win it. I thought they could have won it. I thought if uh, they'd have really gone in search and maybe left themselves exposed, they could have won the game. But, you know, there's probably more animosity and more off-the-ball incidents today than there was goal-scoring actions. It was just that kind of game. Both sets of players coming together, both sets of players seemingly being very committed. A few and far chances that came had to be converted. There were some big chances in that game today, especially for Dominic calvert and then for Duran towards the end of the game. Either team scores them, it's completely different. But at both ends of the table, I think that'll probably be a positive point.
Yeah, the defensive work was really what stood out. A couple of great saves from Martinez and Pickford. Great block by Mikolenko to deny Matty Cash late on as well. But it finishes all square at Goodison Park. Everton nil, Aston Villa nil. Vicky, Leon, thank you very much indeed. So we'll have a reaction to Everton nil, Aston Villa nil a little bit later. But now our focus turns to here.